Summon Sign is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 14 of Summon Sign, Last Day of Media's weekly in-depth gaming discussion podcast. I am your host, as always, Brad Ellis, and joining me this week are, or is, Ben Smith and Hello. Maddie. Hello. Maddie, I don't know your last name, but I don't know if that's on the, the down low, so I'm not going to even no, bother it's not. Schroeder. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, what's Maddie's <laughs> last <good>. name? <laughs> uh, before we get into the show, though, Please check us out on patreon.com slash last damn media. We'd greatly appreciate it. That's how we are supported primarily. Keeps the lights running, all that good stuff. So head on over there. Five dollars a month gets you early access to this show as well as our other podcasts, like Defining Duke, Sacred Symbols, Punching Up, all that good stuff. Leave a nice review too if you enjoy the show. It does help us reach new people. So we we greatly appreciate that. Thank you. All right, enough business, gentlemen. <laughs> Ben, we just got back from the live show. Well, not just back, but a week ago, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say it was great. It was awesome meeting you and everyone else in there. Maddie, I'm sorry we couldn't meet you, but it'll, we'll yeah. make it happen. Well, yeah, we'll day. make it right. We'll make but it right. This year. I'm going to ask you about PAX in a second. But first, sure. Ben, what was yes. your favorite part about the whole trip? Oh, um, well, it definitely wasn't the part where the venue couldn't get the sound to work. Um, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So that wasn't it. I don't know. I think. Like, you know, we've we've hung out um, playing games and stuff and we've talked mm-hmm. a few times and been on shows together. But uh, just getting to meet you for the first time and then hang out with everybody else who I've I've met, you know, before in person. I guess technically I have met you in person, but you didn't know who I was like. True. Years ago. Was but anyway. Ago, yeah. But yeah, just getting to hang out with the crew like we're we're together, you know, once or twice a year at max. And even then when we're together, it's not for very long. So like just getting to have that that face to face time, it's different than than the the online. The online's still valuable and important, uh, and I don't want to diminish that. But um, yeah, just the the face to face time, getting to see the crew, and then of course like you know New York City is either the greatest city in the world or the worst, depending right. on who you are. But just getting to be in New York City with people that you like and having different experiences than you've ever had before is is always a fun time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It was great meeting everyone. It was really cool to meet a lot of the audience, too. You know, my yeah. first live show with LSM. So it was really great to see some faces, the names and all that good stuff. But I got to say, yeah. man, my favorite part, getting to eat on Colin's dime. At oh, that yeah. Restaurant. <laughs> Always a good time. That That's, was real nice. Yeah. And the best part was we got to eat on Colin's dime without him being there. I, true. Yeah. We didn't so have to eat that. one. That's you know, it's a win. Win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an awesome no, I would have much preferred Colin be there, but hey, I'll yeah, still eat on his time. You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, Maddie, you were at PAX, dude. Tell me about yes. PAX. I've never been to PAX. Oh, what really? makes PAX so special? Uh, I think it's uh, it kind of links to what you guys were talking about earlier about just like seeing people in person. Right. Um, this is like I got to see Cog that weekend, so that was good. Nice. Like you know, we 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 host so much together that most of our interactions are online. So seeing him in person is always great, but uh, it's also a chance that like, if, if a member of the audience sees me, they stop me. It's very validating. It's very fun to like take pictures, just chat, see how everyone's doing. Uh, I like the shop. So I, I enjoy checking out all the retro game booths. It's also, uh, re- it's also really nice when it comes to uh, just getting to see some indies, you know, you always walk away. Like I have pretty strong energy for video games, but like I, I walked away, like feeling as always like, you know, get like a little shot in the arm you're like man right. this industry's great and so yeah it's it does all of that in one also boston's like my favorite city mm. uh new york city's gone down the shitter so that's definitely <laughs> the, the 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 totem pole it's fallen down that but uh boston has risen and it is it is always a good time being there because it's got this like small town feel while being a big city um i made a couple wrong turns when i was trying to go to legal seafoods and so i realized that Boston also sucks with navigation. If you make one wrong turn, you've just added like 10, 15 minutes to your uh, to your drive. So uh, learn that. That's the one drawback. But otherwise, great city. So I love being there. I just have a ton of fun there. And so, yeah, I try to go every year. It's been 10 years straight now. Yeah. So I know like some big companies go there like Square Enix usually has some sort of presence there. 
Mm-hmm. But you said it's a lot of indies, which is great. I love that. But there's like you were talking about um, like retro stuff. There's a lot of booths just run by people selling stuff too. Yeah, like a lot of people will, who who run shops in Boston will just bring their stock there and and, and sell off to a ton of people. Uh, this year in particular it was very indie and double A heavy. It was some would say it was like a down year, but I think it ended up being pretty fun nonetheless because you got to see a lot of new stuff. So if you're an enthusiast, like I think it was still exciting. But yeah, compared to like prior years where like you step out and usually you'll see like. THQ, Nintendo, Square Enix, like Nintendo just was like tucked away with like a photo booth with mm-hmm. Pikachu. Uh, you know, there's usually a bigger presence across these big companies, but apparently there was a clash between GDC and PAX. And so oh, right. PAX has moved its date. So next year it's going to be in May, which I'm excited about because it's not going to be yeah. really cold for once. Yeah. So I'm I'm very happy about that. So I'm looking forward to it. And, and so it should lead to more booths at PAX, which I think they were wise to not stand their ground and, and instead move around and, and be flexible. So now GDC and PAX can, can be stronger. Cool. That's awesome. Oh, uh, what's like the first PAX? Is it PAX West or East? Or what was the first one? Ooh. West. I don't know. West. Yeah, West. It sounds okay. right. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I'm saying that very confidently. And as soon as I said <laughs> it, I'm like, was it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty certain it was. Yeah. Yeah. You seem very confident about yeah. that. So I be- I'll believe you no matter what. Yeah. But damn. Yeah. I would like to go sometime, but I don't know. Like, Maddie, did you have a press badge or anything like that? Or are you just... Uh, I have a content creator badge. So, yeah, there's, like, different types. I okay. They used to have just, like, a general media badge. Now they've separated it. So I have a content creator badge. It just... I think it pretty much puts you on a mail list. And, and so people will try to set up appointments with you. Okay. And then uh, you can flash it and, and get in front on certain things. But, you know, I, I try not to do that. <laughs> it's yeah. Just like, you know, so, I, I feel it's kind of like a dick move to be like, hey, I used to do it at E3. I won't lie, because E3... Their yeah. lines when they oh, started letting dude, the yeah. in, Use it, it just started to get really bad, and like you would have to wait three hours. I'm like, I can't. Like, I want to get my coverage in here. So, uh, when E3 was a thing, I would use the badge then. But at PAX, I just try to set up appointments for what I think looks cool. Yeah, oh, Man, I, I use the badge at E3 all the time. Like, sorry, I'm not gonna wait to. four hours in line or whatever. But it got so bad at, at a point, it didn't even feel like it mattered, especially yeah. at the end. Yeah, where they're just like, well, it's Publix here, so. Whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll wait three yeah. hours to play Link's Awakening, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, I don't know if you've ever had this happen with the, the media or press badge. One time I one year it was really bad. I don't know if people just weren't booking appointments, but we were like walking from one appointment to the next and we just had like p- these very small games, you know, and I'm sure they were great games, but these very small games like see our badge and just like grab us and pull us over and be like, can you please play our game? Can you please? Ri-? I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I have an appointment, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's actually it's, like, so it's, different now. Oh really? Okay. Like, it's I, like don't get, a, I don't get. I don't get pulled aside. Yeah. Okay. This this year was, or at least this year was quiet. Like I used. I remember I used to like. That's so funny you bring that up. I forgot. I used to tuck my badge in my shirt because I was just. I would get like people going like, "Hey, come on, come play our game." And I just felt like an asshole because I'm like, it doesn't look good. Like I don't want to. I don't want to go play this. But, right. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what would happen a lot. I was like, oh no, sorry, I got an appointment. Like I tell them that shit, but. Uh, and that's that's completely cool. Though. That and the, the pack staff who usually harasses you, they're like, "Sir, you're creating traffic here." Like they. <laughs> non-existent this year i was like okay this is this is like a low-key year so it was kind of nice but it's so funny you bring that up because i forgot that was a thing yeah that's awesome was was it pax that colin and chris got kicked out of yes Mm -hmm. okay (laughs) it was well i think it was west we still we still support east here (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's so funny dude. never been the west though (laughs) (laughs) boys we got some more questions before we start talking about games first one is from 9-11 9-11 is a reference to MGS2. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, fellas. First, forgive the name, please. It's for the Snark Tank. Dude, every time I see a weird name like that, I assume it's for Snark Tank or Chris yeah. or something like that. Every time. This one's for Maddie. Did you give up on Outer Wilds? If so, I hope you give it another try at some point. It's an incredible experience that I feel like would click with you if you figured out one of the major puzzles in the game. I'm not trying to be the it gets good after X amount of hours guy, but this game is totally worth bashing your head for even worth looking stuff up. If you're not, or if you're stuck, totally get it if it's not for you though, it's definitely not for everyone. Cheers boys. Yeah, this shit got dropped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I played like 10 hours of it and I was like, I don't like this game. Like I just don't like, it's not fun. <laughs> uh, not even fun. Like it's not satisfying. I should say would be the better word. Like mm. as I'm piecing things together, I'm like, I'm not enjoying this. Like this is just, I've given you enough of my time. 
I'm not going to put my head through a wall to get that. Oh, moment. Like I just, it's gone. I know myself too well. It's gone. Like it's not going to happen. Like I'll, I'll just yeah. hate the game more probably. So I'm uh, stopping myself while I'm ahead. But yeah, I, I dropped the Outer Wilds in a rare Maddie drop. I decided, you know, because I, I started on a vacation when I went to North Carolina and uh, played it there in any downtime I really had. And on the plane, I was just like, this, I just, this controls horribly. I, <laughs> I'm not interested in this world. The puzzles aren't satisfying because it controls horribly. <laughs> like, I just, I don't like the game. Like, I don't know how to put it. I'm not trying. I know people love it. I'm not telling you you're wrong before. Because I know this is one of the most celebrated, like, it's the best game ever. But I, I don't like it. So I was just like, I'm going to move on. Yeah, I think that's fair. Maddie, uh, the same thing happened to me. I played that game for so, not as long as you did. I probably played for like four or five hours. And I just got really annoyed about the time rewinding all the time. Yeah, it just when I was like, my puzzles. Yeah. I was like following the trail. and I was just starting to get somewhere. And I was like, OK, now we're getting somewhere. And then just like whoop. And I was like, yeah. well, yeah, I do don't want to keep redoing again. it over and over again. But uh, yeah, that's it. definitely a game I was totally out of the loop on everyone loved that game except me yeah i do i should give it another try sometime but that's interesting to hear you had the same experience i did yeah i've heard if you come back to it like you're gonna like it more maybe i will because my expectations are in check but i just <laughs> been shaking his head no <laughs> <laughs> i checked this game out at a pax east years ago and then i was like I, I don't know it's not really for me whatever and then they i think they sent it to us maybe and and uh i checked it out and i played it for like Somebody else was reviewing it, so I didn't feel bad mm-hmm. dropping it. But, you know, I played it for like two hours. Didn't like it. Uh, picked it up like a year later because the people were raving about it by that point. Didn't like it. I think I've probably put 10 or 12 hours into the game total, but I started it over several times. And yeah, I, I want to like it, but I think I'm I'm just there where I'm like, this just isn't a game I like. Mm-hmm. It's OK, I think. Yeah. But uh, the audience will not let you think that. Yeah, that, no. that it's a game. It's OK not to like. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm. I'm, uh, I'm, we I'm, hate I'm sorry, the I'm outer wild sour here up front, but <laughs> just <laughs> that game is just not like <laughs> it could be the show title, Brad. It's just we hate the outer. Wilds. We hate outer it's, wilds. Yeah, yeah, that's a great. That's some a nice good... viewership. There you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got Nick writing in. Good day, you sacred summoners. I'm currently playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and I'm head over heels in love with everything this game has to offer. I've not had time to play many games over the last 10 years, but I'm now finding myself with an abundance of time to whittle away, and I'm unsure what to play next for my backlog. My Mm. uh, list consists of The Witcher 3, Death Stranding, Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk, Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite, Mass Effect, Skyrim, Final Fantasy 16, Elden Ring, Bloodborne. All opinions are welcome, but what should be the next game I play? Keep crushing the amazing content, Nick. Thank you, Nick, for writing in. Uh, I don't know, dude. You listed like a lot of games in a yeah, lot. Where, of, where have you been, Nick? Yeah. yeah. What's going on? A lot of <laughs> games and a lot of good ass video games. Yeah. Uh, Skyrim and Mass Effect and all three Bioshocks in the same yeah, list. I'm like, geez, holy hell. Man. <laughs> oh, I don't boy. know. Like... The Witcher, okay, so The Witcher 3 got a next-gen update, or a current-gen now, so that's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. And it's probably dirt cheap to play that game. Yeah. Death Stranding, I love. Mixed bag game, though, for a lot of people. A lot of people do not like that game. Probably Maddie, just judging <laughs> by his face, I don't think he likes that game. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. That's, I always joke okay. with, the, with the Death Stranding guys. I've never played it. I just judge it hard. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 is an incredible game. I love Red Dead mm. 2. Yeah. Long ass game, though, too. Also, uh, dude, I don't know. What do you guys think? There's so many good games on here. I was, if I was going to pick one game off this list that I would say you're most likely to have a great time with. And if you don't, it's a shorter commitment. It's Bioshock. The first mm. one. I'm not even talking about two and into that. I think they're great. But just play Bioshock one. And if you want to keep going, you'll know that you want to stay in that genre. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only game on this list I've never played is Mass Effect, which I am planning to play this year. Oh, um, but I know it's amazing. But I have reasons for like why they all don't work or why they all work or don't work. Mm-hmm. But I think Bioshock one is the safest bet and maybe the best game. Maybe. OK, what about you, Maddie? I so you like Rebirth. So I'm thinking from like that angle. Um I would say yeah, I'm, I'm with Ben. I think Bioshock is just 
such a special and if you go through all the dlc and you see that world like it's such a great full circle kind of experience that shouldn't be missed and that's definitely from what i'm looking at with this list the most digestible like most of these games i think all of them except bioshock push the 50 hour clock easily uh mass effect if it's you're talking about the first one is the only other one that fits in that like 20 hour slot and that would actually be my other suggestion if you get the legendary edition play the first one see how you like it i know a lot of people's favorites is two cogs favorite is two mm-hmm. um i really am partial to the first one it's just such an amazing video game from top to bottom the choices really matter um cyberpunk though is incredible like it really yeah. is uh i i, I love that game since launch mm-hmm. uh bloodborne is my favorite from soft game so that's another one skyrim is a classic i would say since you're going rebirth can be like a hundred plus hour game we don't know how much time nick's put into it i'm on ben's side of the fence like let's go smaller See how you like Bioshock one go from there. And if you like that, you can burn right through two and infinite quickly. Infinite being the longest of the bunch. If you're looking for another RPG, I'm saying mass effect, like stay with something small because rebirth is such a big game. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I like Bioshock. one as an answer? I think that's a really good pick all for all the reasons you guys said, particularly the length. And it is such a, a really special game, especially if you don't know a lot about it. Just rapture is one of the best settings in games ever. So I think that game is really good. And it's, dude, Bioshock 1 and 2 are probably also ridiculously cheap. You can play that on pretty much anything, too. I would say play Bioshock 1. And if you're hungering for more, I would say take a break and not play 2 and Infinite back to back. Play something in between that, I would say. Just to give it a little time to breathe so they don't all blend together for you. Especially 1 and 2, I guess, could if you're just rushing through them since they're both in rapture uh but everything on here is extremely long yeah (laughs) dude just play okay i would say you just should try skyrim just because it's so well known and beloved like skyrim is a really great video game like it's not my favorite game on this list but it's very accessible Mm -hmm. and i think anyone can hop into that game and have a good time like, if you wanted to get nuts, I would say play Elden Ring because it's insane. But yeah, I don't know Elden what kind Ring of games fun. you're into. Why don't you just stick with Bioshock? Bioshock's a good one to start with. Yeah. Play that. It's a really great game. I and, would say looking uh, at your list, if there's anything he wants to delay, I would say delay the bloated ones like Witcher 3. Mm. Red Dead 2 is long. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know about Death Stranding. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 can be long. You can also beat it in like 35 yeah. hours. I would say wait on 16 to all the DLCs out before you hop into that. Because it's coming out next month, I think, the final one. So wait till then, at least. But yeah, just play Bioshock. You'll have a good time. All right. This is from Ryan Gerson. Boys of Summon. Query for you. If you're talking behind someone's back, isn't that their front? Hmm. I don't get it. Am I stupid? Well... If you're talking behind someone's back, isn't that their front? I guess it's the fr- the back's front. Oh, that's kind of crafty. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I guess if we're going to do semantics here, but <laughs> I'm, like yeah. a, I'm like big on English, but I'm also like, OK, you knew what I meant. Yeah, yeah. you know what I meant. Yeah, come on. I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. You know, we don't take kindly to queries around here, right? Just yeah. weird stuff like that. We don't take kindly to that. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, I've never even thought about that. But Behind talking about someone's, someone's, back. someone's back just has a ring to it. So we're going to keep that going. Yeah. Maybe the back doesn't have a front at all. It's just the back. Did yeah, you think about that? He's, dude? he's really ruining this statement for me. Ryan, please stop. Yeah, Ryan, you're banned. If you're talking behind <laughs> someone's back and you're saying that's their front... But if you were talking, then you would say you were in front of them. So if you're if you're going to take this literally, you were talking behind someone's back from the inside of them. And that's terrifying. That's also yeah. disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for writing in, Ryan. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. Either, but you did make us think. So well done. All right. <laughs> this final warm up question is from Meatball. Greeting spicy soldiers. Just a quick shout out to Mr. Duke Plays. I've fallen head over heels for the Legend of Heroes games, thanks to you covering across all channels. I'm wondering if you'd ever consider making a Remembering the Trails games for the series similar to what you did for the Elder Scrolls and Fallout on Retro Rebound. These games are so special, deserve deep dive spoiler cast. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
we're I want to do that. It's just you know probably the best time to do it was when uh, Reverie came out because that was mm. like a whole saga that just was concluding. Now we're about to do uh, through Daybreak in July, and that's the start of kind of like a new saga. And there's probably going to be another like five more games. So right, it's either going to be a it's going to be a movie or a movie one of these days. But we'll do it for sure. Yeah, because a lot of I know a lot of Trails fans have come to my channel because I've covered a decent amount of their games and and that series is really underrepresented. So it's, it's something right. I just want to do from the heart, not even just like, Oh, this will do well. Like, I think, I think it would just be nice to do because I've spent so much time thinking about it, talking about it, playing them like, hundreds yeah. of hours. So yeah, I'd definitely like to do it. I appreciate me Paul writing in. As someone who hasn't played trails, but would like to, what sounds appealing to that series about me is that it is like a gigantic story that just continues. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of kingdom hearts in a lot of ways of just, these I always say it's literally strongest. Kingdom Hearts with like strong focus. And I say I would love like Kingdom Hearts craziness is what makes it special, I think. But like Trails is there's stuff that will happen for the first game that comes up in like the sixth game. Like mm-hmm. it, it, like you'll go, oh, my God, that has so much more purpose now. So nothing's really wasted time, even if it feels like wasted time. But yeah, it's it's definitely got a lot of continuity, which especially nowadays is super rare. You know, you're always like restarting right. and rebooting. And so this game series just keeps going and keeps tying things in i think a lot of people are going to hop on with with daybreak this year because it's yeah it's a new play the most right? modern looking game it's as someone who's played and beat it, it's really dark like it's a fucking amazing game i love it cool yeah definitely want to play those i need to play lost odyssey first though if i'm gonna yes, play an older sir. rpg i'm gonna play that one first love it's that only game. one but oh, uh man. i got it i've had it for years i just have never played it yeah you're a big final fantasy guy right so you yeah would- you yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I would love that game. Yeah. I also have The Last Story on Wii, and I've just never played that either. I got that too. Yeah. I've never played it, but yeah, it's from the same developer, right? Miss Walker. Yeah. 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 Dude, what is Miss Walker doing, man? Where is the PC port of Fantasian? I, know. I don't want to play that on like my phone, dude. I, I feel like I'm speaking to myself right now. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> the same thoughts. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what's happening? I need that on PC or something else, for God's sakes. Please. Please, Mr. Walker. I'm surprised Microsoft didn't gobble them up, actually. Didn't that yeah, seem like was... a good... They had a working relationship in the past, and it seemed like a good snag for a Japanese company. Hmm. Maybe yeah. they tried. They, I wonder. They let a lot slide that generation. You, you got to think about it. They let Bioware go. And I know people will be like, well, Bioware <laughs> sucks now. But like, you know, you wonder when they were working with Xbox, I was like KOTOR, Jade Empire, oh, Mass man, Effect yeah. 1. Yeah. Yeah, so it was they pretty were good killing it. Yeah, damn, dude. Mm, that, yeah. that's a blunder for sure yeah. i mean reminds me of when playstation just fucked up with demon souls and mm. let from software slip from their fingers yeah yeah it's an equally bad uh equally good example just like damn dude well anyways we're gonna talk about some video games that we've been playing thanks for writing in, everybody we appreciate it boys dragon's dogma 2 is out we've been playing i've been playing i've played about 20 hours i would say now i love the first dragon's dogma it's rough. It's got a lot of rough edges, and I would say this game does also. But boy, is it fun. Maddie, I know you've been playing it too. Let's start with you. Give me your impressions of Dragon's Dogma 2 so far. Uh, yeah, I'm like you. I, I really liked the first one a lot. Uh, it was uh, It's one of my favorite fantasy RPGs when I really look at it, broadly speaking, because I've talked about it so much, and I've, I still played it up until dragon's dogma 2 came out like i was running through an old playthrough leading up to this launch um and dragon's dogma 2 i have about the same amount of hours as you um so where experiences are, are probably roughly the same and uh I, I just gotta say that like the danger of this world is really what grabs me the most mm-hmm. is not like that typical souls like danger it's more like i have to be very methodical before i go out like i have to level up the vocations get the skills going empty out the inventory, combine any items I need to check for any side quests, you know, go through the whole list. What's near, what's far. Do I take an ox cart there or not? Like there's a whole process. And then when you go out, you're out there. Like I'm right now getting ready to venture to this whole other part of the open world. That's just like, I was looking at the map. I'm like, damn, this is a pretty big map. And I unlock this quest and they're like, go to this region. I'm like, okay, where's that? Oh, and it's just (laughs) all the way to the West. It's just one single dot. And there's a whole area of black surrounding. I'm like, oh, my God, that is more of the map. So I'm getting ready and leveling up and equipping the party to kind of go on this dangerous trek. I think the pawn system's genius. They didn't have to change Mm -hmm. a thing with it, and they kind of didn't. 
Um, they just added to it in, in some ways, like they added the pawn quest, which I thought was a really cool idea for those who haven't played. You can like assign quests to your pawn, like kill this boss. And, and the person, if they kill the boss with your pawn gets like money or an item you assign to it. So it's a really cool interactive experience, uh, but also summoning them and having people who have seen certain quests, their pawns have guided me to certain places because there's not there's waypoints, but most waypoints lead to like a whole area that you you can kind of look around and see where the quest giver is or where the next task is but like that pawn can just lead you there themselves because mm-hmm. they've seen the uh, solution through already that type of stuff is awesome it's it's a ton of fun and so combat feels great i've been playing thief um the gut and run ability is insanely good uh it just it is a incredible game and there's so many secrets packed into it that's why it reminds me more now than it did before of a souls game because like i went to this like misty village in in the east and uh, went up into this house and talked to this guy and it turns out he was like a thief maester and he gave me the special ability and like I read this scroll and I unlocked this new ability and I was like damn it's like that was yeah. just a random conversation that I was like looking for something else and I found this here uh, so yeah game's great uh, I've been really having a lot of fun with it yeah I think um, one thing I like about the game is it seems to pay off if you actually talk to people mm-hmm. yeah because it's not like you walk into town every time and everyone has quest markers above their head Right. Sometimes you walk in and someone will come up to you and be like, Arisen, I need help or something like that. My cow is <laughs> dead or something. But if you talk to people, sometimes they'll offer you a few quests or some vi- valuable information. Definitely like you're saying, I, I did go to that same village and run into that guy. I'm playing as a, a warrior right now. I started with fighter, then I went to warrior, man. Warrior's really fun because you have a bunch of crazy charge attacks mm. where you just like hunker down for a second. You hit a guy and they just go flying. Like the physics in this game are so damn yeah. fun. Yeah. It's so awesome just seeing like an enemy you hit just go flying. Or there was a chest I couldn't reach it apart. I picked up a pawn of mine and I just threw him up there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is the kind of shit I love about this game. But those pawns still never shut the hell up. Just like yeah. the first game. <laughs> they are always talking. Arisen master. Follow the, the reason he knows where to go. And sometimes the the pawns I've had in my party they're like i know the way and i'm like all right so go show me the way then they just go like a completely really long way yeah i'm just like i'm just uh, i'm not gonna follow you dude <laughs> but uh, that's the kind of jank that is it's it's weird because it's very janky but very charming at the same time so i'm like yeah this is what dragon dogma should be uh ben tell me your experience of dragon's dogma so far yeah so I, unlike you guys i never played the original dragon's dogma uh, I don't know when I bought it on a sale at some point and it's been in my steam library for mm-hmm. five or six years probably. And I've never <laughs> played it, but uh, the hype, I didn't know anything about this game coming in. So I just, you know, I'm going to play it and I got to say, I'm enjoying every moment of it, but I am about 10 hours in nine, 10 hours in. And I still am like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Which I think is okay. That's totally fine for me. Yes. I like that kind of game where, you know, you got to figure things out along the way. But when I hear other people talking about it, I'm always like, oh, that's a thing. Okay. That, I didn't even know that was a system. Which I'm sure if you played the, the original, that would be mm-hmm. more, um, you know, kind of intuitive to it. But no, I'm I'm loving it. I very much like the, the open world aspect of it. I am trying not to mainline stuff, even though I'm pretty early on. I'm just trying to explore. I'm someone who always needs to talk to everyone who could potentially give me a quest or something like that. I'm not necessarily going to go do them all, but uh, I want to talk to them and see what they have to offer. And Mm -hmm. then I like the fact that, you know, depending on the time of day, depending on the situation that's surrounding, if you've completed something else, you know, different quests are no longer available and, and things like that. It's kind of maddening when you're on your way to do something and you realize like, Oh, it needs to be this set of circumstances for that to happen and that's not going to happen now so yeah. I, it's kind of irritating but I, I like that as well and I, I like the fact that there's no quest markers uh, like somebody said that you know I, I don't know who's got something to offer I just walk in and and I get to experience as much as I'm willing to put my you know put, put it out there and, and see yeah. what happens <laughs> um, so far all the, all the pawns I'm using are ones that like my friends have made uh, Brad, I think I'm using one of yours and I'm using one of Lockmort's maybe right now. Right. And I don't still really know how the pawn system works, but that's fun. Like I'm getting, I'm under, I'm trying to understand it, uh, getting a little bit more used to it and just being able to 
you know, like when, when I'm playing with somebody who one of the locks pawns and he's like, oh, in a, another world, I found a chest over here. And then he takes me there. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, that was cool. But yeah. also it would have been really cool to find it myself. Uh, <laughs> chances are I never would have found it myself. But just the idea of so I, I like and hate that mechanic at the same time where it's like you're you're using the knowledge sure. of your other friends. But that kind of reminds me of like those um, those those lunch table conversations you'd have. Where you're like, oh, yeah, I was in this part of the map. And your buddy's like, oh, if you go up on top of that mountain and kill a bunch of trolls or a bunch of goblins, and then you go into this cave, there's a there's a thing there. And I'm like, so it's kind of that same thing without being, you know, multiplayer. Yeah, uh, which is which is neat. So, yeah, totally. just still trying to figure out the game. Uh, I spent, you know, of that 10 hours, probably two of the hours in character creators, which was <laughs> really great. <laughs> really great. I have, yeah. uh, I have no regrets about spending that amount of time, but. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it. I like I said, I still know what I'm doing, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying yeah. not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, Maddie, since you played the first, you pro- it's been a long time since I played the first one, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it seems more story focused than the first one. Like there's more going on with the narrative, especially right away. Like there's a lot of missions, like sneaking into the castle and stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of figuring yeah. out that. And I was like, oh, this is nice. There's like actual cutscenes in the game and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is actually kind of like, I mean, it's not, I'm not going to oversell it, but it's actually like an interesting plot, too, where I think the, at least where I'm at, I should say. But like the first one got kind of muddy fast, like you just didn't know what was actually going on outside of like, oh, my heart got stolen. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where it feels like this game, like, oh, you're the Arisen, but there's a false Arisen. I'm like, that's cool. Like, that's mm-hmm. already a cool idea. And and you're kind of working to unearth why this is happening and. Um, it's not really about getting your heart back initially, which I thought was was a really cool approach. Um, what, I, what I really like is is so much of the game in spirit. I mean, you could tell just like they were telling the truth when they said like, oh, this is how De- Dragon's Dogma 1 was supposed to be because like, when you fire the game up, the title menu just says Dragon's Dogma. Like it doesn't yeah. even have two next to it, which I just thought was a really cool touch um, that resonated with me a lot. But uh, even like the opening part of the game where you're, like in a cave and then you're running to a fortress. I'm like, Oh yeah, these are the opening beats of the first game. Just like presented a little differently framed right. a little differently. Um, it's not beat for beat, but it's, it's pretty similar. And so uh, it, it does feel like they just looked at that first game, like a case study. And so like, how do we make this way better? And mm-hmm. that's what they did. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of a Bethesda game in some ways, Maddie. And what I mean by that is I went to this village and this guy comes up to me and he's like, Hey man, I'm looking for this, stone or whatever someone stole it from me <laughs> and i'm like okay dude i'll find it and now off in the distance like right after i walk through the conversation i see that guy and his friends beating up some dude just fucking <laughs> killing this guy and they eventually knock him off a cliff <laughs> and i go up to the body and it's the guy that stole the stone or whatever i resurrected him then the guards came by the same guys killed him again like five minutes later and I was like, okay, well, this is fucking up the whole quest for me. <laughs> so I had to like resurrect him again. Then I got the stone from him. Then they fucking killed him again. I was like, well, well here's your stone. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like, that's the quest line. And I found out you could give the stone to different people and you can make like a counterfeit of it and all this crazy stuff. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's really awesome that you could do that. There's so many different outcomes. And they just decided to kill each other just randomly in my game. And I was like, okay, I kind of love that, even though I'm would have cool to be able to flesh out the quest for myself, but just the fact that that happened to me is so awesome. Yeah. Have you uh, have you heard about the dragon plague? I think it's what it's called. I've I've heard that. And I don't know what it is or anything about it. Don't tell me what it is because I want to oh, yeah. I want to find out for myself. Like if it's catastrophic, it's going to be hilarious. And I'm into yeah, that. It's pretty catastrophic from what okay. I've seen. <laughs> don't tell me what it is. Yeah. I just want to right. experience All it you. for myself. <laughs> And if like everyone dies, then so be it, dude. It's fine. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff I love about the game. It's just a lot of the mystery around it. Yeah. I don't like Ben, you said you don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what the hell's going on a lot of times when I go out there. I don't know what I'm gonna find, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm just running around randomly. A griffin just comes out of nowhere and kills one of my <laughs> like sends one of my pawns off a cliff. It's yeah. like awesome to see that. I'm like, wow, but <laughs> my pawn's dead now. So I'm like, I'm I'm in a much stickier situation. But that's the kind of great shit about this game. Some bad stuff about the game is it does not run good. It does yeah. not run as good as it should. I played on PC and it's not good. Like I have a good PC and it's they patched it so it runs a little better, but it still needs some work. Maddie, are you playing this on Xbox? I'm playing it on PlayStation actually. And okay, I, I've I've been fine. That's that's the weird part is um, 
it makes me wonder sometimes i'm like do i have a bad eye for this but i was like i know i don't because when i have frame rate problems like i always document them but like i've just been steady like it's not been it's only gone up in cases but it sits around 30 and if it's yeah. changing into the, the upper 20s while i'm fighting i'm not noticing it and i guess that's I think- what frame rate is right like it's the same thing as like someone could say this is 4k and this is 1440p but it's just like what does the image look like on screen like and so yeah. i'm not mm-hmm. skipping around and so I, I i've been fine on performance not that it isn't happening to people like you just said it's happening to you but like for me uh i've been fine i think the pc version seems pretty rough though yeah the pc version is nice because like i can get 60 frames a lot of the times which mm-hmm. is great but like when you go to like the main town or whatever mm-hmm. i do notice a dip i think it's yeah it feels easier to notice for me when i'm at 60 and i go below that yeah sure and like 30 like i think if i was playing on console, so i'd be like okay well i'm playing on call so you know it's 30 it just it is what it is it's not the end of the world like i love tears of the kingdom but that game had frame rate problems too it's just like you get used to it and i got used to it on pc but i just kind of expected i always expect more from pcs and i think that's maybe yeah. a mistake on my part because <laughs> pc ports aren't always that great it seems like a lot of the times when they come yeah, out especially really, so yeah console almost seems like a safe bet a lot of the times but They've been patching it, so it's been getting a little better. So that's good, at least. I've been playing it in handheld a lot because that's how I played. Dre- like oh, you're when playing Dark Portal? Risen came out on 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 a Switch. I, that's how I played it a lot recently. And so I was like, well, I kind of like playing Dragon's Dogma in handheld. So I've been using my PlayStation Portal. My Portal died last night, so I was using the Logitech G Cloud. And I'm like, this is kind of great too. Um, it's it's been a good part of the experience. So I, I just recommend it to people if they have the handheld option, they should try it out. Hmm. Do you guys think this game is an easy recommend for people? Like if someone's like, I need an RPG. Would you be like, yeah, Dragon's Dharma? Because I don't know <laughs> if I would be like, yeah, you'll love it. I don't yeah. know if I would think that right away. Yeah, it's a lot like the first game where I'm I'm very much in this. Like I'm in my own little world here. And if you want to yeah. be a part of it, you can. If you think this looks cool, you should try it. But if you don't, I get it. Yeah, I think it depends on their like if they're looking for an RPG specifically maybe but you really gotta dig in and find out what rpgs they like yeah because it's not like a lot of other rpgs right but it has you know obviously it has some of the same mechanics but uh yeah again i'm pretty early on but i i do feel like it's a hard recommend it's hard to recommend uh for depending on the types of background they have sure yeah because it's like this could be a pretty brutal game sometimes like Mm -hmm. i was just out walking around at at one point and I just ran to some thieves or some band of fighters or whatever. And they just killed me really fast. Like they must've been way <laughs> higher level than me or something. And I was just like, Oh damn dude. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like, I'm fine with that kind of stuff. But sometimes like the difficulty can just kind of like go up and down, like what you just yeah. run into, which I think is cool. Like Maddie, you're saying it adds to the sense of danger in the world, which I, I obviously really am into that stuff, but I don't know if someone's like, doesn't know what they're getting into might be a little rough i don't know i kind of look at like elden ring and i say why not though because elden ring did so well and so many people fell in love with it and i'm like this didn't really shy away from kicking your ass especially if you were new to it you know it it was definitely not afraid to kick your ass uh so i i feel like uh what i will say is if you're like me like i've become tired of triple a open world and i think there were two no better two signs than when I was playing Starfield, which is very much my sensibilities, like that's that's my preference of how I do open world exploration. I mean, their exploration just in general wasn't good. But like when I knew I wasn't feeling that, I'm like, something's off with me. And then I did Rebirth and I was like, I love Rebirth, but the fucking open world, I just couldn't stand. I'm like, I don't really like this. So if you're looking for a strong shakeup and you're tired of the same, like, go oh, this tower, here are these objectives, mm. these objectives. If you're looking for something different, which Elden Ring did provide, I'd say this is the next one that's provided something that that really feels different feels scary feels difficult uh and you have to kind of get really intimate with the mechanics of the game to 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 get the most out of it um this is a good place to turn if you're kind of burnt out on triple a like i was yeah i think those are all very valid points maddie like yeah i i think some games can do it better than others like the quote-unquote ubisoft open world formula i think some games do that better than others like Ghost of Tsushima shares a lot of elements of the Ubisoft games, but they do a few little tweaks now and then to make it more it's just ex- a little more enjoyable, crazy. I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this game's cool just because if you're into just going out in the world and just not knowing what you're going to run into, I think it's great because you can find some worthwhile stuff out there. I haven't found anything crazy 
on the levels of like when I was playing Elden Ring or Tears of the Kingdom, anything like that, where I was like, whoa, <laughs> but I just found a cool little things here and there so far. I know I have a long way to go to the game, but I'd say a lot of the f- cool stuff you find is monsters in this game. Yeah. If you're yeah. into fighting monsters, there's some cool ass monsters to take down. It's great. Yeah. Especially like Cyclops, you know, I accidentally knocked, I accidentally knocked him off a cliff and it was just awesome i was like oh that's so cool that you can do that like i pushed him off the cliff on accident i was just like this is this rules i love this shit yeah i i thought it was just a trailer moment when he was hanging on both edges yeah um, like, they're across like a chasm i was like let me just hit this fucker's hands and actually see if this actually where he just drops i'm like wow i actually got to do that that's cool like i thought yeah. that wouldn't happen it was just a cool setup for a trailer other thing that was awesome is i got the, I think it's the Minotaurs, like they like you can scale them and do heavy damage, but they'll flip you off. Yeah. And one of them threw me up in the sky. And it was just that moment of like, I'm probably like the height of a three story building. I'm like, I'm dead. Like this sucks. And I'm just watching my character come down and my pawn sprints in, jumps and catches me. I'm like, I, dude, yes, was like, that was sick. What? Yeah, it's and so it happened cool. again. I'm like, my pawn's got me and I just hit the ground. I'm like, fuck, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it it's doesn't happen so every good. time, but when it happens, it feels great. I had uh, one of those uh, Cyclops push off the, the ledge moments. And I, when I pushed him off, my pawn uh, jumped at him and fell in with him. Uh, and died. <laughs> so that wasn't great. But, you know, it was cool that that could happen. I guess that is cool. Yeah. Uh, what vocation did you pick Ben to play as? I originally picked Archer because I'm almost always like warrior kind of class. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I played that way for about two hours until I got to the point where you could switch and then immediately switch to warrior. Cause I was like, nah, I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember Archer was really fun in the first game. So, I mean, I liked all the classes and I'm, I want to check them all out. Cause they're cool. Like yeah. magic is really cool in this game. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. Like it's super powerful, but it takes a lot to deal, which I really love. Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. James Hill wrote in, <sighs> hey gushy summon usies <laughs> <laughs> after 25 hours of dragons of 2 i've decided it's a bad good game let me explain story and side quests suck super ass the main story is just a boring mc masturbation session the side quests are just travel to place three days away and kill five lizard guys rinse wash and repeat the saving is dog shit the game <laughs> auto saves constantly it auto saves so often I can barely manually save or manual save. But when I die and load from my last save, it goes to an auto save anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour ago. What's the point of all this saving if I can't reload my most recent one? The exploration of the open world is so hums- hamstring hamstrung by how how much of a painted ass is to get anywhere. Fast travel is so limited, it basically doesn't exist. Good luck finding an ox cart going the same direction as you. You have to go by foot and hope you don't get soft locked, soft locked. So you have to reload your last in save eight days ago in town with single digit FPS. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 2's saving grace is how fun it is for your merry group of idiots throwing hands with all the gods with all the gods creations. Just make sure you mainly save constantly so you don't lose a four night of pro- uh, progress. Am I off the base or am I feeling the pulse of the people? Have a great day. You soft locking your game out there, dude. James, how are you doing that? Mm. Uh, I haven't really run into any save problems. Mm-mm. Have you guys? It hasn't been a problem for me at all. James, I'll say it. I don't believe you. Yeah. Damn, James. <laughs> I don't believe you, dude. Damn. <laughs> the saving in the game, the game constantly saves. Dude, I've died so many constantly. times and I get sent back like 10 minutes, 10 seconds before my fight. What happened? I don't believe yeah. you. Yeah, I you guess have if to you explain have... it to me. If you're someone that has like used to having like four save slots in RPG or something and loading like a bunch of different saves, if you want. Nah, man, I kind of, I like this because it's just like we're saving all the time, dude. It's just like a Souls game. What yeah. happens, happens. That's just the way it is, dude. And you yeah. got to deal with it. Well, I think what he's saying is it's saving constantly. But then when he dies, he's not getting that most recent save, which I, I have not I, experienced. I have not experienced it. Yeah, I've died yeah. several times in the game. And it's been yeah, I remember I, my, my first time going out into the open world, I got ambushed by a Cyclops and died twice and loaded like right before the fight, like same time period. Like it was nighttime. Yeah, he was in the same spot. 
I died to a pack of wolves that just ambushed me out of nowhere when I stepped out of a cave, <laughs> loaded me right as I was stepping out of the cave. So I've died a bunch in this game. And I don't know, I've, I've always reloaded right where I needed to. I agree with like, I mean, the exploration, I think is that's where we remember we were talking about like, hey, is this for everybody? Right. Like the exploration of fast travel and Dragon's Dogma is like that by design. And it's not for everybody. Not to say that it's your fault, James, but like it is intentionally, uh, I wouldn't say monotonous, but it's it's intentionally something you have to like plan around. Like you have to get a port crystal and be deliberate about where you place that because it's going to make your life easier down the road. Like you have to consider yeah. that stuff. The ox card is fair. Cause it's like, you can take one to Melv. I think it's called mm -hmm. uh, at least from the first starting town. And it's like, you know, kind of have to explore from that point onward on your own. But that's part of it. It forces you to go out there and feel the danger. But if it, your saves are fucking up as much as they are, I can see how that'd be a pain in the ass. Yeah. If you don't save problems, I don't know. Like in your soft locking out there, like I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but James, uh, we don't believe you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just sorry, kidding, James, James. That's my fault. But uh, yeah, I think the uh, the fast travel might be a hindrance for people. Like like you, Maddie, I'm into it, and it feels very deliberate to me, and I love that. Mm -hmm. But I could see how people don't like that. They're used to just being able to warp everywhere. Dragons of the you definitely got to plan around what you're doing. But mm. I've had quite a bit of fairy stones already uh, that I yeah. found that I could just Same. I have like five or six. Yeah, the main quest gives you a lot, I think, is what yeah. I noticed. But uh, yeah. Not for everyone. Thank you, James. All right. This is from Full Metal McCoy. Hey, someone suckers. As someone who's just binged Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and loved every second of it, I'm wondering if Dragon's Dogma 2 will be my speed. I love Bioware. CD Projekt Red and Bethesda style RPGs, along with some action based JRPGs. Never even heard of Dragon's Dogma until now, and th I think it looks pretty cool. Thanks and keep styling that hair. Maddie, what do you think? As our Bethesda expert. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a, a, a weirdly specific question just because I was talking a lot about it and I was like, Man, I feel like this is scratching the itch. I was hoping Starfield would like I there's no mm. denying like, you know, as a Bioware fan, as a Bethesda fan, like I, I have this love for the subpar optimization side of video <laughs> games. Like, like there's no denying that. Uh, and, and Dragon's Dogma falls in that category. It's like, man, you're like very imperfect, but I love you for your imperfections because right. you do so many things unique with that. Um, and so Dragon's Dogma, like an exploration and, and how it plays is scratching that particular itch. So if you are a Bioware and Bethesda fan, I'm not saying like it is 100 percent full send, but its sensibilities, the things that bother most people might not actually bother you is what I, I've noticed is consistent with like my viewer base and like we all like Bethesda games and Bioware games. And so Dragon's right. Dogma is just right up that alley. My only thing is if you're looking for because you brought up Rebirth in your a lot of the games you brought up, I'm thinking of like strong party members with a lot of character and story to them yeah. in depth. This is not the game for that. Yeah. Your your party members are just random pawns. Like you make one of them, but they, they don't have like a whole story fleshed out for them. It, that's not this kind of game. This game is more about. I would say the story is the least important part of this game. They do. Yeah. They emphasize it a lot more, which is great, but that ain't the reason you'll love this game in the end. But if you're yeah. cool with that, and you just want a really cool RPG with fun combat and an awesome world to explore. Give it a look, man. Give it a look. Yeah, the, you could also create your own stories in your head if you really wanted yeah, to. Like, if you want to, yeah, RP it. I customized Revan and Bastila, and and so that was kind of fun to 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 make that duo. But I, my head cannon fell apart because I found out their Mystic Spearhand class is only for the Arisen. And I yeah. plan on making Bastila that because she wielded a double bladed lightsaber. I was like. Come on, that's fucking perfect. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to now flip and make my character Bastila and make Revan the the pawn and figure something out there. But point being is like you could do that and then get like I have Siri and Kratos in my party now, so you can make these like <laughs> it's cool like Siri's an archer and Kratos is a fucking mage that just this dude does not he's the opposite of of how he is in God of War. He does not shut the hell up. Like this dude is the most talkative <laughs> NPC. So I don't know. You can like. People have gone crazy with the customization. You can find a lot of callbacks to all different franchises and make your own headcanon. Oh, and like, yeah. I usually I'm not a big headcanon guy, but like it, this game just kind of beckons it where mm. like you get to see stuff people made and like, oh, man, I can have a party of Revan, Bastila, Siri and, and Kratos. This is cool. Like, so I don't know. I have fun with it, but uh, it, that definitely is more the imagination than anything's happening in game. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with that, Maddie. You're correct. 
Um, Ben, what is the weirdest party member you've had so far? Um, the weirdest party member. Well, my pawn that I made, I uh, I made him like incredibly strong and looked up somebody else's. I tried on my own. I couldn't do it. I, I looked up somebody else's description of how to make him look like Giga Chad. Uh, mm. so Giga Chad is my main pawn. <laughs> and then, like I said, I've been using other people's, a lot of other people's, like my Steam friends' pawns. Right. Um, the one that I use most frequently is, it's called, his name is Morty. He's a Lockmort's uh, wizard. <laughs> and he is just absolutely insane. I mean, not only, I'm sure that many of the pawns share dialogue, but some of the stuff he says is completely batshit, which just makes sense since it's <laughs> Lockmort's on brand, pawn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, you know, just the the combination of of spells and you know he's constantly complaining when he has to heal me and stuff like that so i i haven't really delved too far into like i've, I've stuck with the mostly the same party members thus far with a few change in and outs and uh so far i don't know that i've had anything like totally insane but the experiences that i've had so far with them are mm-hmm. a lot of fun i do think you were talking earlier about how the pawns just don't shut up like there's a couple lines they repeat very frequently and i'm like this is probably going to get old but <laughs> it's okay you have friends like that who do the same thing so that's true have, yeah. have they uh commented on your preferences ben like oh they many times yes yeah same <laughs> yeah yeah and at one point all like all three of them were were male i had just swapped like within 30 seconds after i swapped out uh chadley uh which is is chadley brad's, yeah. brad's chadlia brad's female pawn <laughs> <laughs> um, I had swapped her out for somebody else. And within like 30 seconds, they were like, hmm, I wonder if this is an indication of their preferences. And I'm playing as a female. Uh, <laughs> my character is a female. And then I was like, that was cool. Wonder what happened. And then like an hour later, I did the same thing. And I swapped back in Chadlia. And they were like, huh, it seems we've added a female. That's interesting. <laughs> like, I don't remember exactly what they said, but like they just immediately commented on it. Yeah. That's it. awesome. Uh, last question for Dragon's Dogma from Poot. I almost missed your question, Poot. On the topic of Dragon's Dogma 2 and specifically the fast travel controversy, I wanted to add my two cents. I'm approximately 20 hours into the game. And I've only felt the need to fast travel twice at night be spooky scary and finding plenty of fairy stones, at least six by my last count, should I need them. While fast travel is certainly an option, the game is truly meant to be played via foot traversal. Where, aside from the obvious creature you come across, you can stumble across vendors and ponds, caves, to provide gear on the way, uh, provide gear on the way to a shortcut through the map, or even something as subtle as a vital item attached to an individual tree tree trunks. Oh yeah, the golden bugs. Oh, like the oh, golden yeah, trove yeah, yeah. beetles to expand your carry capacity, or shards uh, for weak stones for revival. Anyway, just my general thoughts. At as someone absolutely love with Dragon's Dogma Two, God bless. Hideki Itsuno. Thanks. And although I've tried to uh, take in more else some content via video, given how uh, well, distractingly handsome the three of you are, I don't know if I can manage it with this episode. Swoons. Whoa, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Poot. Uh, yeah, oh, Poot, yeah. sounds like you're having the, kind of the same experience with us with the world traversal, which is great to hear, man. Love exploring. It is nice running into some pawns out there because if you get in a fight, while they're around, they'll just start helping you too, even if you don't have them recruited. Yeah. So you're like, yes, got like an extra pawn right now. And a lot of them, I don't, I don't know if they cost any of the currency to recruit them. I think if you find them out in the world like that, I'm not sure though, but a lot of them have been free for me. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I tried to hesitate from it because I bumped into a level 30 and I was like, I don't, because I heard, I, I'm kind of scared off of it. I had one friend and it may have just been like a random bug, but I think he recruited a high level pawn. Mm-hmm. And I, since they had all the quests finished, something happened that pretty much stopped them from being able to finish certain quests. Oh, uh, so they had to restart their playthrough. Uh, that's the only type of bug I've heard. And he was like 20 hours in. So I, I try to just keep pawns my level also because like, I don't know, part of the fun of the game is the challenge. And like when mm-hmm. you're overpowered in this game, like you'll feel it. like when the first fights you go up against the, the goblins, you hit them a couple of times, you're like, dang, you got some health. But then. As you get that that vocation rank up and you got better gear, you just tear through them. And, yeah. and so that feeling of progression, you don't want to really rob yourself of. But I think you're right, because I like I said, I ran to a level 30 mage that had zero RC. I was like, mm, no, can't do this. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
I guess we didn't even talk about that, but just quick, quickly, it is cool having your vocation and like picking the skills the, the whole list of finding out what you want to use. Like the one I had with fighter was cool. It was like you could launch someone off your shield one of your yes. pawns or something like yeah. that. Just really cool stuff. And you got to, I mean, you could, you can unlock everything, but you got to spend currency to unlock things. So you kind of pick or pick how you want to play your character, which is fun. I like that couple moves to pick from. So not Doesn't everyone has the you. same exact moves. Cause you only, you can only have like what four equipped, I think, or something like that yeah. too. So it makes and you, you can unlock little. the ability to switch over time. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. All right, boys, let's talk about stellar blade. The demo. It just came out. I played through it. Ben, you played through it. Maddie, you've not touched this, correct? I have not. Yes. Please okay. fill me in. My friends are freaking out about this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This not is for the a... reasons you think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a, uh, a game from Korean developer Shift Up. I don't know if this is their first game or not. I don't think it is, but. I think they did a mobile game before this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben, actually, you know what? Let's start with you, man. Let's hear your experience first with the game. I'm curious what you think about it. Yeah, so I mean, I know very little about the background of this game or anything other than the fact I just mentioned, I think they did a mobile game previously. Uh, it seems like they're like they're this. This is their debut outing for a console game, as far as I'm aware. And I, so. I just saw the, the stylistic nature of the game. And I'm not talking about Eve's physique. I'm just talking about the way the <laughs> game plays. I saw like, you know, the initial trailers and I was already like kind of sold. It's um, mm-hmm. it's just exactly up my alley. And man, there's so many different avenues to take this. So the demo, it's about, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours long. At yeah, max. it's about an hour. If you do everything, probably like an hour and a half. Yeah. So, it, you know, you start off at the very beginning of the game. So you're getting all of the, you know, initial uh, tutorials and, and learning how to use the mechanics and the systems. And I'm not one for demos. And I'm, I'm generally one, if I'm sold on a game, I'm just going to play it. But because mm-hmm. so many people are doing now, you play the beginning of the game and that transfers to your to your save when you get the game. I'm much more inclined to do to play demos. Uh, mm-hmm. So. You run into the game uh, immediately, pretty much you're you're in the combat. And that's what I like is that you're experiencing right away what the game is all about. Mm-hmm. And, and this definitely seems to be a game that's primarily driven by combat. There's probably going to be some exploration. It seemed like in the demo there was some opportunity to go and find additional items and and things that'll help you power up throughout it but a lot of people are describing this as like a combination of Sekiro and Nier Automata Mm -hmm. and I understand the comparisons but I feel like it's not enough of either of those things to really describe it that way I you know there's the combat there's uh it's 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 a hack and slash but there's also a lot of you know, fine-tuned parry mechanics and and the precise button pushes that you have to make. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the there's a there's a Asian background to the to the story. You know, there's a it's that style and that and and the characters, but it's not primarily uh, doesn't feel as much like a Japanese game to me. Like like I know it is, but that, that's not how it's presenting as much. Um, so. I really don't know how to categorize this game. It almost feels like it's not a hack and slash, but it's not a from game. Like it's somewhere right. in between, mm-hmm. but also none of those at the same time. And so I really like the fact that, you know, there is some precision with the, uh, the parry mechanics, the block mechanics, etc. But I also felt at some points like it, it wasn't so precise as to punish you to the point where you're going to have to play it over and over and over. Now, again, this is the first hour and a half, two hours of the game. So maybe mm-hmm. that changes from here on out. Uh, I'm not sure, but I really like the way that you can, you can go. And uh, once you've, you know, fought a little bit, you progress, you find a campfire, uh, essentially, yeah. or a, a vending machine, I campground. guess it is very cozy. Yeah. And you set up the campground, you got a little, you got a little music playing there while you're there. You can upgrade your systems. You can, you can replenish your health. You can buy items, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a cool mechanic, and then I like the fact that uh, your your abilities are pretty varied. It seems like, yeah, you know, Eve can can, can kind of just kick ass in a multitude of ways. It seems like uh, so far they haven't explored a whole lot of the story, but the story seems to be at least engaging. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling 
this is just a total speculation on my part that it's going to be kind of a, a mind twister and going to be, um, yeah, like I, I, I feel like it is going to be more of a deep story than, than just shallow. Uh, there's a lot of style and gameplay to this that is interesting and unique, but I really, maybe it's more of a hope. It's a copium kind of thing, but I really hope that the story is going to be equally as cool as the gameplay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Maddie, did you like Nier Automata or do you like Nier games? I love Nier Automata. Okay. Yeah. So Nier, you're in Nier one. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. This you're game. in to this game. And you don't even know it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Maddie, it is so funny how much this game, it takes inspiration from Nier, in my opinion, down mm. to the soundtrack. Yeah. This feels like something you could hear in the next Nier game where you're like, okay. Really? Okay. They that's clearly a, took that's a selling point. By it. <laughs> like the beginning of the game, you like land on this beach and you're, it's like all female units. I'm like, okay, we're Yorha right now going through here. Yeah, this, yeah. The, the earth is all ruined. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is all feeling very familiar to me on that front. And like Ben was saying, yes, there is a big emphasis on story. And I wouldn't be surprised if it gets very deep and very crazy like a Nier game would. Uh, the well, combat right. Ben is interesting. You brought up it. It is the, it. It lands in the middle, like you were saying, with a bunch of different aspects. It's not like a Souls like I would not say this game's a Souls like, or I would not say it's like a hack and slash purely. There's like you have hack and slash combos, mm -hmm. like uh, you know square square triangle or square triangle square triangle. There's some where like there's a pause during the combo, I believe. So it definitely reminds me of like Bayonetta. Some of those combos you could do, which is great. I love all that stuff. And but the, what's really funny is there's like a, you can also block like Ben was saying, you can block, but you can also perfect block to get enemies uh, vulnerable. But there's like a perfect dodge. You mm. can also do kind of reminds me like. A Makiri dodge, you just land it perfectly and it just like oh, okay. is very satisfying. Yeah. Like Sekiro, really? Like yes, like very satisfying like yeah. Sekiro. And um, after the demo, though, you can unlock a harder boss later on in the game where you have way more tool. Uh, tools in your kit did you play this ben i forgot i did this, yeah. yeah yeah so this boss during this boss fight you also have a you have a gun now also yeah. <laughs> you can okay. just bust out anytime and just shoot mid combat which is really sick uh sh there's like a couple of things like the enemies do flash colors when they're doing specific things maddie like you can like tell like okay this flash is like okay if they flash blue i could do this forward dodge and i'll like teleport behind them and if it's flashes purple i think you can you do the dodge backwards and it's like a counter for that. So wow. a lot of it is kind of like very precise reading your enemy's movements, but you can do some combos that have like a little more flexibility instead of just one button, which I think is really fun. Uh, everything feels very deliberate and slow. At first it felt like an input delay to me, the combat, but it, it seems more like deliberate animations, I would say winding up or something like that. Yeah. Um, you can't, it's not as like quickly to adjust as like a Devil May Cry game. You can adjust like you have to commit to some things, which is the from software thing. But it does land somewhere nicely in the middle in the combat. And it ends up having its own flavor, which is great. I'm very happy with it so far. But um, yeah, the world is cool. It's like a very just from the early game is a ruined earth. So you're already going to love that, Maddie. OK, uh, you have this guy. Your name is even the game and who you are. You play as this girl, but you have this guy named Adam with you who has like a little drone that's flying around with you. So I'm like, OK, well, it's even more near now. I got the little pod with me. Yeah, it doesn't uh... shoot in combat or anything like that yet, but it's there around with you. Uh, the environments, there's a couple ways to go. You can find some stuff like Ben was saying. You have like this. Uh, you push the touchpad and does a pulse. And it's almost like detective vision from Batman really quick. It doesn't last forever, but it pulses and you can kind of see where enemies are and all that kind of stuff. Some of these enemies can be really tough. Like there's this guy with the shield. I just couldn't get through it very well. He kicked my ass a couple of times, but it's definitely fun to learn all their patterns, which is so important for these kind of games where I'm like, I get my ass kicked. I'm like, OK, this is great. I can't wait to learn more from this. That's the kind of feeling I think you need from games like this. So I'm glad I got that. But yeah, it's cool. You can swim around with Eve, which is nice underwater. You don't get that very often in these games. So I'm curious how they'll explore that as the game progresses. But um, yeah, I think it's really solid. I'm very excited for the game now, like more excited for the game. It's better mm -hmm. than I thought it was going to be, too. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a really cool game, especially if you like if you're really into action and like combat in games, I think you're going to have a really good time with it. Maddie, I think you're going to really like this game. I had a, uh, I had a question for you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so. This is from a Korean studio, and yes. I look at 
last year's big Korean outing for me was uh, Lies of P. Right? right. It was like a Korean take on on Bloodborne. I know we, we've drawn a lot of sensibilities, but do you say this is more a Korean take on Nier or a Korean take on Sekiro? Or is it as neither of those kind of accurate? Like if you had to pick like an individual, just because that's how uh, I'm trying to get a feel. Because like you could feel... Liza P had a lot of different inspirations, but like Bloodborne right. was probably the biggest starting point for them. I would say thematically near. Like it's okay. very inspired by near all the themes, all the characters, all the vibes going on, the music. That's all very near the combat. I would say falls more in line with Sekiro kind of not quite mm-hmm. this as similar. But if I had to compare them both, I would say sure. it feels more like Sekiro to me. But like I was saying, there's combos you're doing like you were in near and all that kind of stuff okay. so kind of in the middle but it, it feels more overall more like near to me than Sekiro. Yeah. Okay. Brad, do you do you agree that it feels a little more forgiving in the timing i mean there are definitely some points where i was like oh i barely missed that timing but i don't know i just felt like maybe it just clicked better with me or the, or the you know sure maybe but i just was i felt like i was almost never not getting the timing perfect and that is yeah. definitely not the case with with from games for me. Yeah, it might be a little more forgiving, I would say, in some ways. It was definitely a challenge, but like mm-hmm. it's hard for me to judge just from the demo. Right. Because I don't know what the full game's gonna throw at me. Like Secure, I I was stuck on bosses for like hours, or it felt right. like. Right. So I don't know if we're gonna get to that quite yet, but I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm not sure, Ben. Everything feels very very easy to read, I would say, you know, yeah, enemies doing yeah. text, which is good. You need they need to be readable. So maybe that's yeah, more what it I was. guess so. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. RK128 wrote in. Bless the day, summoners. It was amazing seeing you guys in person for the first time. I'm sure you got a kick out of a bald guy, a bald Sonic guy shaking hands with Colin. <laughs> I don't remember that. Did you see that? Uh, there was a guy who was bald that had a Sonic shirt on. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I was yeah. a guy dressed up as Sonic. Okay. No, 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 no. That would be, <laughs> he wouldn't like, have been allowed in the venue. Yeah. Painted blue or something, dude. Yeah. yeah he would not have gotten <laughs> through security. On to the games. The stellar blade demo generally impressed me, specifically the overworld theme. It sounded uh, ripped right out of near and the souls S combat didn't put me off. Not a souls fan. Uh, sadly, either. Did you all check out the demo too? And will you get it at launch? Have a, I promise I'm not playing just for the peaches kind of day. That's definitely a Duke listener right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sign off. Uh, yeah, we checked out the demo. I pre-ordered the game. I'm ready to go. I'm very excited for it. Feels like a, I always love very action oriented games like this. So I was interested regardless, but it, it was just nice getting a demo and just being like, okay, this is great. I'm really enjoying it so far. And I think demos like this are a great sell. Yeah. I think it got the game or people interested in the game a lot more than otherwise. Uh, my Google yeah. just signed me out. Very cool. Google. <laughs> I think it's cool that more and more games are doing demos now. And I know oh, that yeah. some of that has to do with, you know, specifically PlayStation's policies, but I just, uh, there was such a long time there where I just didn't, I, I'd see a game advertised, you know, at E3 or something. And, and I'm like, Oh, that looks kind of cool, but I don't know. And now with so many demos coming out, there's there's definitely been a few instances where I've been like, oh, I I checked out the demo. I didn't care for it. I probably won't like the game, but way more instances of games I wasn't really that interested in. But why not check out a demo? And then I end up buying it. So, yeah, it's it's a huge it's a huge shift for me. I would say it's helped pretty much most games, except maybe for Spoken. <laughs> Which, <you know. laughs> Had problems on its own. Yeah. Like Liza P, I think the demo helped a lot of people get interested in that game. So I think 16 did also, and probably 7. Both a lot seven of Square did. Enix games benefit from it. Like yeah. they did it for their HD 2D games, like the save carryover. I think they did it for Level Live. They did it for Octopath. Like they've done a lot. Uh, Unicorn Overlord had like an insanely long game. Yeah. It was like eight hours long or some crap like that. And that, that carried over. So yeah, it's seems like a lot of Japanese devs are, are doing that to get people in through the door and say like, Hey, you didn't waste your time. Like just carry the save on over. You're good to go. It's yeah. Easy working with people, which is good. Cause there was a time that demos were just straight up dead. Like, yeah, we were just not getting any. So it's, it's cool to see that they're, they're back in full swing. Yeah. Manny, that reminds me, do you think Microsoft will start doing some demos for some of their games? Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, that's a good question. Or does it like, matter for them? Cause they have game pass. 
Yeah, I was going to say you have Game Pass and then you have streaming. So you can literally not even download the game. You could just stream the full game. No wait time. Just boom. So, you know, I, I imagine they'll they'll do demos for games that I would hope I should say they do demos for games that aren't out yet. But it's almost an easier sales pitch to be like, are you unsure? Would you rather spend 70 or 15? Mm-hmm. See if you like it and just go from there. Do you think here's my idea. They should do one for Fable okay. before the game's out like a month before the game's out. I, I assume there's going to be a character creator in Fable. You'd hope. <laughs> I'd hope. With, with the maybe debates of how the MC looks, uh, you would hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope. And maybe let you play an hour or two. I think that'd be a good candidate for them. But um, It would be. I, they need to do something to drum up excitement, I think, because especially it feels like it more now than maybe it will by that point. But they need to create some real tangible excitement around their games. Not like, hey, it's another game. Go check it out on Game Pass. Like they... You know, PlayStation, for all the shit we've given them for their gener- this generation, like Stellar Blade, they're making it into like a big thing right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like it's a lot of talk online, a lot of chatter, and they're doing that through lots of trailers, you know, making it feel like a bigger deal than maybe it actually would have been. Um, mm-hmm. and, and and the demo, like that's that's it. Just put it in their hands, like show confidence and, and we see how it's working. So I would like to see Xbox, you know, dive into that more. You know, the last time we saw that and it was really exciting, even if it didn't end super well, was Halo Infinite, like that kind of early right. launch with the micro multiplayer. That was that was great. Um, so they definitely have the ability to do it and make it work really well. They just have to do it more often, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see Nintendo do it too with their oh. first party stuff, but <laughs> Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi Rush was another. It was a shadow drop, but I mean that was a that was a cool, exciting that was moment. An exciting time. Demo. But yeah, they they so they got their pops. They have their moments, and I I hope they continue to do it because what the, when they do do it, it does feel very meaningful, very purposeful. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. It would be cool to get some more demos just so they have more hype going into the game. Maybe yeah, totally. All right, let's see. This is from Bad Lawyer sixty nine. Hey summoners, is Stellar Blade too horny for its own good? I booted up the demo and in good consciousness could not even get through 10 minutes without feeling awkward about having my fiance in the room. Even the haptics on this game feel horny. In all seriousness, I feel like some people are going to avoid this game because of how hypersexual it is. Others will, of course, gravitate it for the reasons. But damn. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess like I haven't seen any like horny poses yet for the characters doing anything. Like, it's not like near where you can look up to dress or whatever and get a trophy or some shit like that. I haven't seen anything like that quite yet. But you can put on that skin suit, I guess, if you want to. Mm-hmm. And whole oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I've heard. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, yeah. Is it too horny for its own good? I don't know. No. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's super sexual. And the characters, obviously, you know, there's they're they're made to look hypersexual and right. there's jiggle physics like crazy but it's not like like so far at least it's not like we got scissoring scenes in the game i mean just play the game <laughs> chill out like it's a hot animated woman your yeah. your name has 69 in it and you felt weird about having your fiance in the room i don't know man <laughs> i don't know she bro. doesn't know that yeah yeah she that's true he, he may be like no it's just bad lawyer there's no numbers <laughs> it's fine it's fine what do you think, Maddie? If someone who hasn't played it yet, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it's good marketing. You know, I, I like yeah. that's what they're trying to do. Clearly, um, I think the biggest awakening I had to that was with Cyberpunk. You know, you just you saw them talking about like dick physics and like, oh, you could you could see your own, you can customize your wiener, and I'm just like, okay, guys, like, you know, I'm glad you spent <laughs> your hard-earned time and money on this, like. Um, but it made headlines and it got people excited because they're like, man, if you're doing that, then what else are you doing? Um, you know, with Stellar Blade, I think it's it's very, you know, you want to talk about near inspired, like, yeah, 100 percent. Like, they're not the first to do it. They won't be the last right. to do it. So um, I think it's I think it's fine. You know, it, it is what it is. I think there's a, a interesting conversation going on about like attraction level of characters in games like some are being made intentionally ugly. No doubt right. about it. Some are trying to make more realistic looking characters. Some are, you know, Stellar Blade's doing so many wild, ridiculous things from what I can see that, like, the least ridiculous thing is the main character mm-hmm. from sure, yeah. what I've seen. So I, I think it is what it is. I don't think it's a huge deal, but I, I get and respect the whole like, oh, I don't want to have my fiance in the room. You could do one of two things. You could just not play it or just wait till she goes to bed, man. Yeah. 
sneak it a sneak portal. Sneak some in time. You know, that, just do that. Why not? Yeah, get a portal and play it in the corner when she's doing something. <laughs> 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 hey, that's the other thing. Yeah, go handheld. Not literally. Yeah, go, go, handheld. go handheld gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Much easier to hide. <laughs> All right, this is from the Snack Squatch. Hey, guys. I think everyone who has played the Stellar Blade demo can agree that the game is awesome from the characters, setting, monster design, combat, or combat, and that phenomenal soundtrack. We can have a serious game of the year contender on our hands. Despite all these positives, do you think the mainstream outlets will be petty with their scores due to Eve being a sexy, curvy woman <laughs> that doesn't look like your typical American-designed female character. Thanks for all you do. Hmm. This is interesting. I'm trying to think about, like, Bayonetta games. Like, how many of the reviews were knocked down because of her appearance? And I think Bayonetta probably was a very celebrated game c- critically. Like, I'm just going to look this up real quick. What it, what it got Metacritic... Bayonetta, it's a 90% right now. So it got so I mean, there's always going to be people who give it a low score for whatever reason, but I think most of the games of media is hopefully wise enough to not mark it down because of the character design like that. Like that isn't a, a silly reason to mark the game down. Yeah. But you're not you never know. Job. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think you're you're failing. If it was, I hate that it's even a conversation because like it means right. it happened somewhere that I don't remember. But like, um, if you dock scores for the appearance of a character, like you've just failed at your job. Like you don't belong in that position because you just you're not critiquing the game at that point. Like you're you're critiquing appearances and like there's a, there's a level of artistic direction. Like you could be critical of it. Like I think a good example is I'm critical of the artistic direction of Fire Emblem Engage because it's just not consistent with the characters, like voices, their arcs, they're just. They like there was no conversation between the writing team and the and the art team, and they admitted that. And I'm like, yeah. So I think there's a critical conversation to have in some instances of character appearance versus what you're getting in game. But like, if they just look that way and and you're not talking about the story or the character's impact or them as an MC, like they're they're honestly, it's the last thing you really even need to talk about. Right. You know, you can make your jokes, go for it. But like, I just think once you're like, yeah, man, fuck her for being curvy. Minus one. <laughs> what? Are you insane? So I, yeah. I hope no one does that because it's it's a pretty good admission that you're not suited for your job. Yeah, I feel like that was maybe something more of the in the past. Yeah, we would see maybe. I I think like Polygon wrote or complained about Bayonetta's looks or something like that years ago. But it's like, man, who gives a fuck what those guys think? <laughs> Whatever, dude. I think it's just like I I mostly agree with with Maddie with what he said, but. I don't know. It's just weird. You know, this kind of goes back to the last conversation about the game being too horny for its own good. If the game's too horny for its own good, it's like, what's hor- like, uh, I was going to say, what's horny about it? We know what's <laughs> horny about it. The thing about it is like, yeah, OK, so she is a very specific body type of character. Past that, I don't like think about Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, they really drummed up the marketing with the, the druid bear sex right. scene for the trailer. But like, there is more sex in that game and you can make your character look however you want. Uh, so I get it that it's not like you're presenting this specific ideal or something, but like I, I didn't see anybody knocking that game for, for how sexual it was and how yeah, people you know, you like, design Yay! your perfect character, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I, yeah. It's, it, it's a shame. It's a tragedy. I know it will happen. I don't know about specifically with review scores, but the discourse around this game is already stiflingly yeah. irritating. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's like whatever is it a good game or not who cares yeah. what they look like I yeah mean, we care what they look like don't get me wrong i don't want them I, to i don't want them to intentionally make it the other way either but yeah i don't know I, yeah i bet there's probably like more insane shit than some game like very beloved games that people love like you're saying Baldur's gate 3 Dude, even like The Last of Us Part Two, just like yeah, Abby and getting her cheeks clapped. It's like, ah, oh, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to fucking see that shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't know if this game's gonna have anything like that. The, God, the Kratos like God of War QT sexy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> this isn't even that bad. Come on, dude. get with the times. Mash and triangle like crazy, man. Yeah, this is just like some <laughs> PS2 fucking character design shit going on with better jiggle physics. I guess I don't know. <laughs> There's also like I think more egregious examples like um atelier rise is a series my friend played right. and i remember he because like he was like hyping up like man the alchemy system is great i'm like dude i know what you're playing that game for i'm like streaming on discord now and i'm watching and like 
there's a part where you crawl, she crawls through like a cavern and they just lower the camera and like yeah. she's commenting on the position. Like it's very hypersexualized. I'm like, I would view that as worse because they're working the camera and like making it a sexual experience versus like, oh, it's it's an MC that looks very attractive. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. And and there are plenty of games that use critical physics. One of the better fighting games in uh uh, dead or alive it's pretty extreme in it's jiggle physics to the point that they put a switch in the game to turn it off so oh man uh Dude, yeah there's so caliber yeah look at even nintendo with yeah. uh three houses like within yeah. the first hour of that game you meet a teacher and she's just like bouncing across the room towards you and i'm like this is nintendo yeah, yeah. nintendo is, yeah. family friendly yeah <laughs> family friendly dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what about like the roided up dudes in tekken like you know yeah oh my god you gotta dude. keep it, gotta keep it so even their biceps jacked. are bigger than my whole torso for god's sakes yeah <laughs> yeah they're yeah they are fucking ripped in that game yeah it's awesome like every yakuza game dude everyone's fucking jacked up too yeah everyone's ripping off their coat and yeah, they're just great, tatted dude. up and cut perfectly you know dieting perfectly no mm-hmm. belly fat i'm like okay guys yeah all fine. right boys you're, you're like 60. i get it cure you <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, it's time for Sort It Out. On this segment, we just talk about something that needs sort in the game industry. Something we're not pleased with. It could be a game, company, person in the game industry. Anybody. Ben, do you have one this week? It's okay if you guys don't. Yeah, I've got one. And it's kind of... We kind of touched on it earlier, but my Sort It Out is just kind of a general... I'm tired of games coming out either straight up broken or unfinished. Mm. And I'm not talking about like, oh, there was a little tweak that needed to happen here or there. I'm talking about like, we've got so many games just coming out and they just don't run the way that they're supposed to. And right. we were talking about that with, um, with Dragon's Dogma 2 earlier, just that it's um, not running appropriately. And mostly it seems like the problems are on PC. Mm-hmm. Well, if if there's a problem that the game can't run over 30, then limit it to 30. I know w- us on PC, we want our 120 frames when we can get it, but it's, I'm just tired of it. And we've seen it constantly over the last two years. And really, it is the worst with PC because it's usually not the main platform they're developed for. But, you know, I look at a game like Enshrouded, which I've not played since, you know, the first couple weeks it was out in early access, but that game literally, I still have it installed. Literally every time I open Steam, there's an update for Enshrouded. And they're mm. constantly making adjustments. They're constantly making things better. And again, yes, it is early access. But like, if you're going to come out with a game, or like Helldivers, if you're going to come out with a game and it's got some broken stuff, make the updates constant. And I get, like once you've sent the game to the printer and you've got the discs made and you're getting ready to send them out, they've got to go into the distribution channels. You've got your quarterly earnings coming up. Yeah, you need to put that game out. I understand. But we got to have like there's got to be some middle ground where we can stop getting so many games that like even Final Fantasy Rebirth, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. And it didn't really have any major problems. What was it like two weeks after the game came out? They already had a patch to fix like the biggest complaints. It's like you Mm -hmm. knew that was going to be an issue before you had review copies out three or four Mm -hmm. weeks in advance. Like, so anyway, I don't know. It's a it's a deep systematic problem in the industry between both that are that both developers and players are responsible for. Right. Uh, the players don't like delays. Developers need to make their money. I get it all, but there's gotta be some kind of shift that just when games come out, they need to at least be mostly ready to play the way that the developer intended to be. Yeah. Maddie, what about you, dude? Anything? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorted out games PR. And mm-hmm. by that, I mean like, Maybe they're not the right audience or, or group of people to target, but the ones who communicate things happening within the game to the audience, right? Like they handle that messaging. I'm looking at how monetization's handled, and I think we're at a mature enough level in the industry where we know games are going to have microtransactions of some kind, not every time, but sometimes. And I think we're still on like the one hand behind the back kind of approach to things. I'm not really one who's going to freak out about Capcom's monetization in dragon's dogma too but it does highlight something which is like these microtransactions are getting snuck in and that it's on content creators and reviewers to ask more questions um apparently from what i saw in fighting cowboys video reviewers should have been aware that microtransactions were going in and it should have been documented by reviewers even they had a list of like what they're pricing things as what they're selling and i think most of us as hardcore gamers will look at it and shrug our shoulders but we're kind of at this point where 
uh, we figured out like, okay, loot boxes suck. We like cosmetics or things that don't impede gameplay. And people are willing to pay for that season passes sometimes work. But I feel like we're still like a generation or two ago in our communication of them where it's still like, hey, here's not in the case of Dragon Zelda, like here's a review code and microtransactions are live after the review. Like it's making right. creators and reviewers look really foolish and they get the blowback because they look like shills when they're not. They just don't mm-hmm. know. Um, and in the case of Dragon's Dogma 2, they, it, it's a little less forgiving just because like it was apparently communicated. But uh, even even if it if, if it was, they're still not t- telling the consumer that. And I don't think we're at the point where at least maybe I'm naive anymore, where someone hears that microtransaction and they be like, fuck it, I'm not supporting it. It's like about how egregious they are. I think most people see microtransactions like, OK, sure. But like even I love Tekken 8. It's like arguably my favorite game of the year. And like they added a shop afterwards. And it's like, stop doing things that put you on the defensive. Like, just let people know, yeah, we're going to monetize this game. It's a fucking online game. Mm-hmm. And it's and we're going to need cosmetics and all these goodies to keep the servers up, to, to keep characters coming out, to keep continuing supporting the game. Uh, just communicate that. It shouldn't be this surprise. Like, it's a business. People know it's a business. And I feel we're not operating quite like that on one end of the fence where uh, we figured out certain micro tra- or, uh, monetization methods that work, but just not communicating them in advance with the consumer just to be aware um i don't think it scares and again i could be naive i just don't think it scares people off as much as it once did i don't think it's the gigantic red flag it always was it's just like they don't blame ubisoft they introduce time savers and a lot of companies do that but it's like i think we have a right to know and so mm-hmm. i hope we are or whoever writes the newsletters whoever puts it out i don't say make a fucking trailer like here's the things you can buy but just let us know let us know they're going to be there that's it most people I've never seen I've, I've seen people go cautiously. OK, like they're going to be microtransactions. But look at the rest of this game here. Um, mm-hmm. this is kind of what's happened with Dragon's Dogma. So, uh, yeah, that's my story out. That's a good one. Uh, mine is <laughs> this doesn't affect me, but I feel bad for people. Uh, so Dragon's Dogma 2 is on PlayStation, PC and Xbox. A patch came out for PC and PlayStation. At the same time, Xbox patch delayed. Wow. I don't know how many days it was. I don't even know if it's out yet, but it just was not released at the same time. And I've seen this kind of happen to games, mostly to Xbox, for whatever reason. It's just like you're not getting you're you're not treated the same. dude. It sucks, man. Like, Maddie, you know, all too well about this kind of thing. Like, I'd feel so bummed, dude, if I bought this on Xbox, you know, that was my only option or whatever. Like a lot of people's. It's just like, damn, dude. Yeah. Second class is up in the foot constantly. Yeah. Even if it's out of their control, like it's just a bad look, right? Yeah, so. it's a bad look, man. It's just, yeah. it's just like, dude, how can you? It's so much harder to recommend that kind of stuff when there's just so many things like that. Just yeah, sucks, man, for those people. Because it's one thing if it's like first party and it's in their control, but when it's like third party, like, hey, these are kind of the safe bats. Like, this will be everywhere. It's like, no, nah, we're still getting that late. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. sucks. Yeah, it's. I have a little, you know, a little bit of experience from the very indie game dev standpoint right. of submitting updates and stuff and it's crazy because like steam you submit an update and they're like cool good to go send it out Mm -hmm. we don't care if it breaks your game that's your fault (laughs) uh like so there's a little bit of too laissez-faire sometimes Mm -hmm. but xbox is definitely the one that that takes a little while uh, to to get things going i know that interesting yeah now i'm not saying like in this case or any other specific cases that that's you know maybe people are just prioritizing xbox less but i know that Xbox tends to be the one that is um, if you submit an update to all three stores at the same time, you're going to get approval from Xbox last. Wow. Hmm. Maybe wow. the store that should just be to Xbox, to like streamline that shit or something like, I don't know, just the yeah. Xbox in general for everything. Just break it down to make it easier for people to submit at the same time. I don't know, yeah. dude. Yeah. I'm not sure what the pro- who's to blame for the problem. But uh, it, the, there's probably blame to share. I'd say. Yeah. But yeah, just. Let those people who buy the game have the same experience or as close to as possible. Yeah. yeah. Just feel bad for them. Yep. All right. This sorted out is from Nevitz. Sorted out Microsoft points. I swear they keep changing the amount of points you earn every few months. I know it's good for them, but they are taking and not replacing it with anything. No new objectives or any or other ways to earn points. I'm getting sick of it. Maddie, please tell me about this. What's happening? Yeah, so something we covered last week on Defining Duke, there was Microsoft Rewards, which was uh, for for all people want to have Microsoft overhaul their achievement system. I had 
defended it a little bit a couple of years ago saying like, well, hey, they got this kind of cool ecosystem where you have Microsoft Rewards, Game Pass, and the achievement system. And they're all kind of working together uh, where you're going to gain these points and then you can spend that money on like a Game Pass subscription. You can get you can get like Starbucks with it. You can just get like a, a debit card with it and just put points on your account and just pretty much earn money by playing these games. Um, and over the last year, they've just gradually like a death of a thousand cuts, just mm. taking away like their requests you can complete like daily, weekly, game specific, monthly. And people were like create guides like here's how you get the most points this month. You'd have to use Bing. Like it was a challenge, but like people who are really into the ecosystem and were giving it their all would get rewarded for playing a lot of stuff on Game Pass, for playing a lot of stuff on Xbox, uh, and for buying stuff on Xbox. They'd have challenges like, oh, like I got 6,000 points when I bought Halo Infinite, for example. Like they just, and you add up these points and you can cash them out or let them stack. I have like 15,000 points built up from just kind of dabbling um, over the course of time. But there was a time where it was way easier to rack up points and they've just, neutered the system completely it's just not as rewarding it's not as fun like the daily ones are like play a game they used to be like play psychonauts get this achievement in psychonauts and it would like reward you fairly like it was way more interactive like you looked forward to it like i would i'm not gonna act like i was a diehard getting in there every week but it was cool when like a new day one game pass game was coming out and they're like hey hit a home run and it'll be the show 24 is what they would have probably done like you know and you get 50 points on top of like the the, the other 50 you got for just playing the game. Um, so you kind of just kept getting a little something back. Mm -hmm. And I understand they can't just over reward you, but I, and maybe they felt they were doing that, but I always warn people with Microsoft rewards. I, I mean, I made this joke on Duke dozens of times, but I always call, I said, beware of evil villain Microsoft. I said, or evil villain Xbox. I said like one day they're done being your friend. They're going to start taking stuff back and i pointed to this rewards program as like one that might be the target like they don't want to give you free shit come on like it's a corporation right. um and they're doing that and so uh, the problem is like it's there but it's a shell of itself now like you just get way less rewards and it's it's super frustrating for xbox fans because it was one of it was one of the selling points it's like yeah they don't have platinums but you get way more points back than you would on any other platform like nintendo you only get points for playing or when you like register a game cart um, yeah, you, know, you get those. What do they call them? Platinum points Coins or something? Or yeah, yeah, whatever. Something like that, right? I know yeah. PlayStation has a new reward system. I, in fairness, Stars, haven't dabbled yeah. with that. Yeah, so I haven't dabbled with that. I don't know much about it, but I know Xbox was definitely like leading the charge, and <laughs> not anymore. Like they've they've completely gutted that system, in my opinion. Damn, dude, that yeah. sucks. It's unfortunate. All right, this is from Josh Games. Hey guys, I have a sorted out submission. Sorted out superhero games. With series like Spider-Man and Batman Arkham, the audience has clearly spoken. What the people want are single-player superhero games and, that, uh, and that's played out both critically and commercially. Yet studios keep trying to chase the live service model with games like Avengers and Suicide Squad. The people have spoken. Maybe it's time the industry actually listen. Thanks in advance and keep on keeping on. Uh, yeah, I haven't played Suicide Squad yet. I'll play it when it's like 30 bucks, maybe or 20 bucks. I'm not mm -hmm. paying more than that for that game, but I did play Avengers and it was fine. But the multiplayer part was the least interesting part of that whole game. And it sounds like Suicide Squad. I don't know. It's not not letting the world on fire. Yeah, it's, so, it's been really interesting yeah. to see how because like the way you spoke about Avengers is how people are easing up on Avengers because it was I think it's still a bad game. But yeah, there has been so much awful shit since then that it's like gradually <laughs> people are like yo you weren't that bad were you like at the end of the day you weren't that bad but it was kind of the beginning of the slip yeah it's yeah it's a scary time man i'm nervous about i'm nervous about this from every company it's just everyone dipping their toes more into it some get I burned but some find success i think people are down he, he says here, you know, people want single player superhero games. And that is mostly true. Right. I think that is the predominant. But we also haven't had a good multiplayer superhero game in a very long time. Right. So I would love a good multiplayer superhero game. Because, yeah, Avengers, not that bad. Suicide Squad, not that good. Uh, <laughs> if you just put if they just put out a good superhero game. It doesn't matter if it's multiplayer or not. They're going to sell it. So 
but yeah, Marvel like Rivals is going to be the answer, Ben. I don't know what you feel about that game. You know, I actually haven't looked into it much. I saw like the initial burst headline, but I haven't even seen like a trailer or anything. So it's literally Overwatch. With, with oh, yeah, <laughs> it looked like Overwatch and Smite <clears throat> combined to me. Well, yeah. if you uh, if you want to achieve very high goals, you should just model yourself after current day Overwatch. That's what we've learned because oh. uh, <laughs> it's going really well. They're, they're killing it. Yeah, yeah they're, literally. they're doing great. <laughs> Jesus, man. Keep it up. <laughs> Keep it up. Overwatch. Jesus. That just made me depressed, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, this is from Dylan. He wrote in with a sword out and keep it up. We're just using the sword out. I think it's finally time or I think it's finally time to fully reveal stated to K3. Undead Labs has been dropping little hints such as getting help from the coalition on Unreal Engine 5. I think the major problem with two is that is the look and just jank of it so they can. So if they can show out with a visually stunning state of decay three with maybe a forge like mode in the future, we'll be eating good. Thanks all. And have yourselves in a one day. Yeah. What's going on with state of decay, Maddie? I I don't know like anything about this game. I've no never played it. <laughs> no one does. Yeah. State of decay is super popular for Xbox fans. Uh, they are still updating state of decay too. And I'm not talking little wow. things like they're adding modes, maps, like they have, Wow. It's one of the most impressive kind of games still getting support when you look at it, or it's rather impressive. The game is still getting support uh, and good support at that. But there is that growing. Uh, I'm trying to find the word impatience in the Xbox fan base now of. OK, it's cool. You're still up to, but move the hell on. Like, let's get oh, okay. to K3 out. But the thing that's kind of the monkey wrench is it, it comes from Kotaku. So you're like, I think it was Kotaku. Someone can correct me wrong, but I'm pretty confident it was. There was like a report on on Undead Labs that there was like a very much like factioned off studio, lots of different approaches to State of Gate Three. Minimal pro- minimal progress was made since that CGI announcement, which I hope Xbox has learned from with these CG announcements to just avoid mm-hmm. them because it causes them way more headaches than they need. And if they were, if, if we didn't even know State of Gate Three existed, people would just be hyping up State of Gate Two, I think. But uh, with State of Gate Three, I-, I want them to show more, but Xbox is in a really <laughs> to put it lightly, a weird spot where it's like, okay, faith in your platform is kind of waning. You need to show out, you need to show out strong and the stuff you show out strong with needs to be nearby and games like state of decay three and fable can be those corner turners for them. Cause I think those should be big ones. Right. But I think as we're starting to see more from that, what I call the class of 2018, I, my expectations are shifting in a more realistic place. Like, I thought I thought Hellblade 2 and I think it's going to be a great game, but I thought Hellblade 2 was going to be this like triple A blowout. Right. Right. But they're like, no, we still make games like this indie double A kind of spirit or triple A independent is what they call it. So there's probably a big budget behind it, but it's not going to be made like uh, God of War is kind of what I was anticipating. Right. Um, and I'm learning more and more like, oh, Avowed isn't this triple A banger like it's being made like a double A game so that Obsidian can go make a bunch of other things like Pentiment and grounded or whatever is going to follow that up from that team and so on so i thought and i think many people had mistaken themselves in the thing like oh the the whole makeup of xbox game studio is going to shake up but to their credit they've kept that studio culture and let them make what they want um and so i don't even know if like we're seeing you're like oh state of k3 on unreal engine 5 i'm like i hope it looks great but kind of like the defining quality of state of decay is the same as dragon's dogma and bethesda games like it's janky but it's really <laughs> charming and it's just super supported and it's immersive like they're great games i love them but uh i hope state of decay 3 is visually stunning but like I, i'm not trying to straw man dylan here but it's not even a guarantee it's gonna look great uh right. visually I'm, I'm saying i think it'll be a great game uh, i remember when when the report had come out from kotaku something about it just kind of rubbed me wrong i was like something seems off here i reached out to their ceo on, on linkedin i was like fuck it that's the only way i can get into contact with the, the higher up i was like or studio head i was like hey like anytime you want to talk about this game like we'll have you on duke and you can set whatever record you want straight and, and and talk about the game. And that was like a year and a half, two years ago. And they were like, yeah, we'll be in contact. I had like, they gave me a PR content. They're like, like when you start seeing stuff, reach out. And I was like, all right, cool. Maybe like half a year. And like, here we are now. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, last summer showcase was great for Xbox where we got a good look at what's to come mm-hmm. both near and long term. I think they did a good job of that, but State of Decay 3, I don't know if it, it's going to be a combined effort. Like I always said, it wasn't just on Starfield to save the platform. I put that in quotes, by the way, for anyone's freaking out. Uh, I think it's going to take a lot of games come together, doing really well, get on a streak like PlayStation did, and then boom, you'll be good to go. But yeah, when it comes to 
state of K3, you ask like, what, what's going on here? No clue. No one knows. Yeah. I don't know if it's in development hell or they're just quietly cooking, but no clue. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a weird balance of like when you show your game. Cause like you don't want to show it and wait five years until it's out or something like that. Cause that's obviously not does. good. Yeah. Like I love how Capcom does it. Not everyone can do this of course, but you know, they show it, it's like out within a year pretty much every time. It's great. I love that kind of shit, but definitely don't want an elder scroll six situation going on here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's just like, okay, I don't want to see your game revealed and be like, okay, this game's 10 years away from when they reveal it. Like, that does not feel good. Elder no. Scrolls 6. Elder Scrolls 6. That's going to be a hell of a day whenever that game finally <laughs> comes out. Wow. Yeah. The expectations on that game are going to be pretty damn high. Dude. Doomed to fail. <laughs> Sadly. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully they'll figure something out. Sweet. For I have game. faith, but I, I kid. But it, it, everyone knows I have faith in Bethesda. Foolish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're your boys. You love yeah, Bethesda. I love them. I love them. All right, guys. Keep it up time. The exact opposite of sort out stuff we're pleased with. Who's doing good? Ben, start with you, buddy. What do you got? Uh, well, I had my keep it up picked out a couple days ago before oh. you sent me the... Um, this outline so it kind of goes along with that but my my keep it up was going to be for the lsm community wow and that was just coming off of the uh the live show in new york city obviously you know they're great all the time but it really shows like it puts a face to the crowd uh whenever you have the shows and and you get to see people come out and you get to see people doing their own thing together and getting to see them at the show and and meeting people and so obviously you know all three of us um, have some other things going on too, but like we couldn't do this part of our life um, without our community and them being supportive and everything. So keep it up, LSM community. You guys are great most of the time. And uh, <laughs> it's good to get to see you guys. Uh, a lot of you, 500 ish of you last weekend in person. And that, that keeps me, that energi- re energizes me usually. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. What about you, Maddie? Anything? Well, it's actually funny because I was thinking in the same spirit of Ben. I didn't get to go to the event, but when I went to PAX, I guess like it's kind of cool to be like, keep it up, gamers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I just it was really nice to to obviously meet people who supported like what we do here and my uh, Mr. Matty channel Retro Rebound. But uh, I think it's really easy to get caught up in in the vitriol online or in the comment section and kind of be like, man, some of you are just miserable. How many of you are miserable? And it feels like all of you might be miserable at times, but <laughs> uh, you go to a convention like this and you just see like the fun people are having. The interactions I had are positive. I've never met someone in person who's like supported our stuff and been like, wow, that was an asshole or like they were kind of a dick or they were annoying. Right. It's always good people. Uh, it's very, very much affirming of like what we're building here is worth it. And we're getting a great community together, but also just like a reminder that not everyone is a sourpuss. And so uh, when you get those, I, mean, I think it's, you know, Ben used the word re-energizing. It's really good to have those moments. And I think conventions are great for that, just to see the energy surrounding games. Like it's a morale boost, really. And so, yeah, I just want to say to everyone who loves the hobby, keep it up because it does make a difference. It is a positive place. It can be a positive place more often than not. I think you just have to know where to look and uh, where to avoid, frankly, because like stuff like Twitter would def- if we went look through the lens of that, we would define everything negatively, I think, which is something I got caught up in with gaming in particular. And uh, it totally shifted my gaze when I went back to, to uh, I almost said Overwatch for some reason, but uh, <laughs> back to PAX and, and, uh, and, you know, just saw how nice people were and just how fun it was and the good conversations I had. It really filled me with a sense of like happiness. It was great. So keep it up, gamers. Nice. Well said, boys. Um, my keep it up, I guess, is just to shift up. It's really cool to me to see a kind of a studio that was known for a mobile game in Korea kind of get some shine for a really cool looking game. So I love seeing new devs step up like um, obviously the Liza P devs, same thing. Korean studio kind of getting their moment of shine. And Liza P was great. So uh, I'm really happy with Stellar Blades so, so far. So, you know, keep it up, shift up. You're doing good work, man. you got a bright future. So keep going. Yeah. Let's go new right. devs. Yeah, new yeah. devs. Hopefully we'll put you in there, Maddie, also, <laughs> when your game comes out. All right, let's hope. 
<laughs> yeah, let's hope, dude. Imagine, imagine we all just fucking, fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes the worst game at LSM. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got some from the audience. This is from Chase H. Hello, summoners. Keep it up, Ben. That live show was amazing. You did such a great job with the setup and everything that went into making that show such a great show. So much behind the scenes stuff goes into making those shows happen and shows that happen and you killed it. Anyways, praise the sun summoners and thanks for everything y'all do. Yeah, I have to echo that statement. Well done, Ben. That is a a humongous amount of work. Even just scheduling all of our flights and hotels like Ben does all of that shit. That's all a nightmare. So thank you, Ben, for doing that because I'm happy I don't have to because all that shit sucks. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, it's good to hear. It's you know, it's easy to feel like people don't notice that kind of stuff. Um, Sometimes even like within our own and not that they need to like it's not their focus, but um, it's just it's nice to. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, all that stuff that that live show happens because of Ben. Ben is like the main force behind that. So he starts early, might I add. I wasn't there, but my man starts early. Yeah. And gets gets everything organized. He does. And that's important because we're all late <laughs> all the time. So Ben's the only one on his shit in this company. Ben is sure. one of the most reliable people I know. Yeah. He's like the dad of LSM. The thing that makes he me so mad about together. that is that uh, uh, I literally missed a meeting today uh, by about okay. 20 minutes. I know it happens, but like it doesn't happen to me, you know? Mm. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> now everybody has like a... Everybody has like a two month grace period now for me not to get mad at them for being late with stuff. But after that, it's back to normal. It's back to normal. Yeah. All right. This is from Sean Mason. Hey, summoners. I would keep it up for everyone at LSM. Ben, your work behind the scenes does not go unnoticed. You absolutely worked your tail off this past weekend. Brad, it was a pleasure to meet you in person. You did an amazing job as a judge. Maddie, your coverage of PAX was outstanding. I really enjoyed hearing you had a good time. To everyone involved with LSM, thank you. Best, Sean M. Look at these like feel-good comments coming in from our audience, man. <laughs> yeah. That is nice. Thank you, everybody. We yeah. greatly appreciate that. Uh, this is from Gothic Hello Kitty. What the stellar dump truck is up? <laughs> dump truck is up. You dastardly dogmatic dukes spiritually sussy summoners and magnanimously monstrous mares. Whoa. Writing to say, keep it up to Korean devs. I'm a PC only player. So I'm bothered by Stellar Blade being a PS5 only exclusive for now, but I like seeing Korean devs branch out of developing MMOs. I hope to see more of what South Korea can offer in the industry and maybe KRPGs will become a common term in the near future. Cheers. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, again, more games out of places that we usually don't. Well, like at least console or like single player focus games is great, man. I love seeing all what these devs got. They got chops, man. So it's great to see them get their games out there, and especially Stellar Blade and Liza P got a lot of attention. So it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, love that. Super good point about uh, branching out of MMOs. I never considered that, but it was a very like much a hot spot for MMOs and they've yeah. branched out to make single player stuff. That's really good. So yeah. yeah. Definitely got me pumped for celebrate boys. That's for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, about a month away. About a little less. This is from Quinn. Hey, summoners got to issue a big time. Keep it up to the sound designers at Square Enix. Over the past few years, I've been blessed enough to build a pretty amazing gaming slash home theater room hybrid in my basement, complete with a 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos system. And I don't know how you say this. Kilps speakers. Clips. Clips. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been the best gaming experience I've had so far with the sa- uh, from a sound, s- sound standpoint. The use of uh, surround and overhead channels is incredible. Hearing the Shinra chopper overhead, the ambient conversation shifting to the rear channels when running past NPCs, the perfect musical score, all just absolutely top notch. Wondering if any of you guys have a system that takes advantage of the superb sound mixing in the game or if there's or any other games that come to mind that really maximize the capabilities of modern audio. Loving the show, Quinn. You boys got surround sound or anything nice like that? No, I, I have kids instead. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't get that. <laughs> no, I used to have surround sound, um, but it wasn't a great system or anything. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's just not uh it's not one of those things that rises to the top of the budget these days for me. Yeah. I've Same. just been so into headphones i've been using yeah. headphones for a long time now that's just like how i like to play i don't want to hear like it just minimizes the noise around me yeah like yeah stuff going on it's just nice it feels more intimate and all that stuff 
I agree. But like, it matters more to me than like the little details, like just being able to kind of isolate the sound. Yeah, of- totally. Like, I'm sure your sound system is probably amazing and I bet it's awesome. But just from where I'm at, headphones are the way to go for me for right now. Yeah. But one day I would like a killer surround sound. I think uh, Dustin has a nice one, doesn't he, Ben? It's decent. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Okay. Sick. All right. It's from Eric. What's up, Sam? <laughs> Sam and Signs. <laughs> thought this might be a good one for you MMO, oh, for the MMO boys. I like to give a keep it up to Jagex. More importantly, the old school RuneScape team. This 20 plus year old MMO is uh, almost entirely community run, meaning nothing makes into the game without being voted in by the community first. Thanks to this and highly passionate devs behind a uh, b- dev team with a deep love for the game, there has been a boom of new challenging content in the past few years that constantly pushes the boundaries for of this once simple game adding things like new areas raids and even new skill coming skills coming this year uh, next year really? some of the end game wow. pv pvm i don't know if you meant pvp or if pvm is something from that game specifically i have no idea m isn't anywhere close to p or e on the keyboard i uh, yeah i guess it's something specific to the game then <laughs> And this game has been some of the most engaging and satisfying gaming I've done in recent years by far. Thanks for all you boys do and keep slapping that fish. All right, we'll keep slapping that fish. It's better than the chicken. Yeah. Uh, have you guys played old school RuneScape? I've never played it. <sighs> Did I play oh, it? Maddie. <laughs> oh, Maddie. Your face when I asked that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, PVM is PV Monsters, by the way. I checked it out. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh my god, yeah. I, I I mean, before it was called old school RuneScape, I played RuneScape. So Damn. that was uh yeah, I, I so it's actually funny because that, that was like a, a point in my life where I missed so many games coming out because of RuneScape that I think that's why I was able to open up Retro Rebound is because I missed so much that I was like, oh, <laughs> I have this whole window of my life to just explore now and, and then some. Um, but yeah, I played RuneScape for like six years straight. Like I just Damn. ignored everything, man. This game is so God, I love RuneScape. Yeah, uh, it's cool to hear that they're adding so much content and new skill is actually like a huge deal. Like, I don't remember the last time they did that. Uh, I haven't paid attention to any of the updates, but people can actually find not to self plug here, but like people can find on my my Mr. Maddie channel. I made a RuneScape video in like 2017. I went back like community there is awesome. Like, I remember mm-hmm. I was doing like a, a wood cutting pier and some dude just showed up. was like, here's a million gold. Have fun. Like, community is. <laughs> by the way, as a kid, like that was the dream. I used yeah. to buy fake gold online that like someone would sign into my account and go like farm it for me. And like, that's how I did it. Cause I would just never had the confidence to get that, like in the patience to get that yeah. much money. But uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this community is great. And uh, I haven't played in a while, but I stay away for self-preservation. Cause I, I love this game. Now with combine that with nostalgia. Now I would, it would have me in its death grip, especially cause yeah. I want to try final fantasy 14. Like oh. that's gotta be the next MMO I get into. So I, I want to give RuneScape another rip again, but I just, yeah, it's it's yeah, so man. good, though. This is a great keep it up. I would love to play. I need to play that game at least one time. I need to try it just because yeah. I know so many people love it. Music it, is it looks so charming. Yeah, so the music and art style go a long way. Like I, I couldn't tell you a thing about the story of the quest. Like <laughs> it's just the, it's just the memories baked into it. The it's something you just literally I think most people playing it nowadays grew up with it um, yeah. or didn't know any better where they didn't experience the other free games that are available on like your phones and stuff. But yeah, RuneScape's like ability to stay relevant is crazy. Like they are yeah. on RuneScape mobile. They did RuneScape. I don't know what it's called now, but I remember it was called RuneScape three, which is like a new oh, version right. of it. Um, so yeah, they, they got a lot going on over there. Jagex. It's really impressive that they've just kept it rolling. Yeah. How you look fondly back at RuneScape is how I look back at Final Fantasy 11 room. Mm. Like, man, I just oh, love yeah. that game. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. super old and I can't really recommend it to anyone. Cause it's so <laughs> old in its design. It doesn't hold up in a lot of ways, but I just like a lovely soft spot for that game. I just love that game has combat. That's like a slower version of 12s, right? Do I remember that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You like I want to try it. Yeah. 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 It's still available. You remember we talked about this. You can still play. I play usually like once a year at least. Wow. Awesome. Because I'm going through the story content of the games. That's like the reason I was playing. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's old. (laughs) It sure is old. (laughs) All right, Ben, you're still playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I, am. I have finished it. Maddie has finished it. You're still going through it. Let's get your impressions, man. Tell me, how's your time been with it? Uh, amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. Now, 
I'm probably like 65 hours into it. I'm in chapter 10 because okay. I'm doing everything as it comes. Mm. And uh, every time, so, you know, I talked about the Stellar Blade demo. I talked about playing Dragon's Dogma. Anytime I'm playing something else, even if I'm enjoying myself, I just keep thinking, wish I was playing Rebirth right now. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting because I don't know if I've talked about Rebirth on this show or not, but uh, if I haven't, I love it. No. I am just such a huge fan of everything they've done with it. Everything they did with Remake, I absolutely loved. And so, you know, headed into Rebirth, I was very excited and I'm still very excited the whole way, but I was not expecting what I got with this game. Mm -hmm. and I didn't expect the huge open world. I didn't expect all the extra stuff. And I didn't expect to, once I found out that was there, to actually enjoy it. I like open world games, but I wasn't quite expecting, you know, this level of enjoyment. So I'm getting to a point now where I'm playing pretty much, you know, do everything as it comes before moving on to the next story objective etc. And I know that more stuff opens up later too. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting to the point where I, I just keep thinking like, man, I wish the story was progressing. I, like, I wish I was progressing the story. But I'm enjoying the side stuff so much that I don't care. Uh, yeah. And that's unusual for me because the, a lot of times I'll start out open world games like this where I'll start out you know, doing all the checkboxes, doing everything there is to do. And then at a point I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to finish the game and I'll go back to it. And inevitably... I either never go back to it or it takes me two years to go back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and more often than not, it's I never go back to it. But with this game, for whatever reason, I just can't, I can't move forward. I won't like, I'm enjoying the side stuff so much. And I think that the big part about that is that it's, there's some stuff that's just, you know, side stuff for the sake of side stuff. It's just filler. Right. Stuff. Yeah. But not a lot, like a, pretty much, pretty much any of the quests that involve your companions that involve the rest of the party are like deep and, and meaningful. And I'm thinking about, you know, one specific side quest early on, and I won't get super deep into what it's about, but uh, you know, you, you get to see like a side of Barrett that just, you definitely didn't get it with the original final fantasy seven. Mm -hmm. And you really didn't think that even that was going to come with the remake. You know, once you got to know Barrett better, you still didn't really see that coming. And I was just mm -hmm. like, it's, it's such, there's just a few lines that really open up the story and it's just very i don't want to say moving because i don't know if it's actually that deep but it's it's special i think yeah i think the side quests like the proper side quests are actually pretty good yeah for, especially from a narrative standpoint you get to yeah. learn a lot <laughs> i even like that one it's early on uh you escort that dog salmon dude to his like other owner yeah. and it's like an escort yeah, mission but they make it entertaining with the character dialogue going yeah and the song is a banger, man. The song, the song is, is a banger. Like, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, it's so good, dude. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just some of like the, um, and it's just an open world game thing, you know, like scanning stuff, you know, sure. scan this material or like the crystal, like that stuff gets kind of old, but at least with doing that, they at least tie in stuff like you can get more lore on the region now if you want, yes. which I really do appreciate. Maddie, you, you said you did not like the open world in this game. Yeah, what did I, it for I, you? What, what, what was like the moment? I'm like, I can't do this. Ben actually said it. It was kind of interesting. I uh, like tit for tat. Like it was. Oh, yeah, I love this. I'm checking all the boxes. I got to actually right where you're at, Ben. I got to chapter 10. I went. Yeah, I think I'm OK now. Like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. finish this because you mentioned that lack of progress. And like the best thing to me about Rebirth is the story. Like, I mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. liked it. And eventually like the amount of content was just so much that it you know what it is it presents almost this mounting wall that's growing and growing and i'm like okay i guess i'll bang that out and and that out okay this is getting a lot it's a lot more than i thought it was like you know especially i'll just say this is a spoiler but like once you hit chapter 12 they hit another switch of just like a dump truck of content comes your way. And I'm like, holy shit, man. I was like, how much? <laughs> and, and that's not even accounting for other bonus stuff that was already there. I was like, dude, I, I was like, I'm going to be here for another 50 hours if I try to hit all this and, and go. Uh, so I was, I want to say I, I wrapped up the game with like a total play clock of in that 55 to 60 hour range, which I was happy with. I think mm -hmm. that's a, that's more than double the time I spent with remake. Um, but yeah, the, the open world isn't bad. Like it's it's not at all. Uh, I I had the same problem Ben did. I was just like, man, I'm holding myself back. But dang, like this stuff is really fun. Um, I prefer the more 
uh, handcrafted narrative driven side quests. Um, I think it would wore me down were the checklist stuff like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to do the proto relics, especially because those are really interesting. Mm-hmm. But just banging them out like four in a region, I was like, oh, my God, like this is like pulling teeth at times. Like, it's how long this is taking. Um, and I just started to lose some of the fun factor. Even the gameplay was really good. It just felt like to stop and go. So sure. it's it's I, I don't blame the game. It's my taste. And it's one of those games that. Uh, again, like Ben, I was like, I'll go back one of these days. And that's what I did with Remake. I did end up going back and just banging out the side content, uh, those bonus fights. And with Rebirth, I mean, it's impressive how much they, they've packed into this game in such a short development timeline compared to like how games are usually made in this five to six year range. They did all of this in four. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's just how much is here. And so part of me is like, man, what's the rush? Like, in that, like, I could just finish the story and come back and just appreciate it again because remake i walked away from i was like that was a masterpiece but as the years went on i came back again and again for like intermission and then wrapping up the remake content like i just loved it more and more and i'm like i'm gonna do the same thing with rebirth like i loved it it's great for what it is uh they're doing something bold here and i'm gonna go back i'm gonna probably play whatever intermission style expansion they inevitably do and then i'm gonna go back again and i'm gonna hit up that that other rebirth content i'm missing and by that point maybe whatever re-game they're making for the third entry is announced and like that would that'd be cool so um, I'm happy with where I left it, but yeah, I was definitely a little tired of the open world come yeah, chapter sure. chapter 10. Yeah, I at least like that the open world, they make it at least somewhat different every time you explore it with the different mm-hmm. chocobos. They have like yeah. different abilities, That's which fair. is cool. Yeah, and you get the buggy, which I loved. I loved seeing that, so that was awesome. Uh, the cool thing about a lot of the side quests is that they have good payoffs, yeah. particularly proto relic i was like yes <laughs> this is my yes. kind of shit so maddie you're in for some good stuff down the line i can't wait for you guys. i can't wait for you to finish ben yeah see what you think about the game because you know i loved the game i was yeah. so happy with it dude it's Did like you yeah. do all the side co- or are you doing all pretty the much side all of it yeah. yeah nice i've been cleaning stuff up uh i think i have one side quest i have to do mm-hmm. one thing but i did like all the queen's blood shit i loved all of yeah, that stuff that's so fun. so fun yeah yeah I did like everything the game threw at me just because like I love Final Fantasy seven. So it's been like, you know, it's like a theme park for me just playing the game. It's just yeah. fucking love it. A theme it park really with an the actual park. theme park in it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. so good. And I was very confident after uh, remake going forward with the series. I was like, OK, they know what they're doing. It's great. So yeah, this yeah. game even just more concrete. I'm like, OK, now they really know what they're doing. I want to like, ask. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to ask just because I'm I'm curious. and and. Obviously, we will not talk spoilers, but just did you like the ending? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, Matty, I'm always originally I was always cool with them doing whatever they want. Yeah, and I'll just say that I yeah. don't want to don't want to talk about anything else. We can get into yeah. it down the line. Spoilers, sure. but I'm on board too. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. I'm into it. I was in. I was into the ending, of the original game. So Thanks. I'm cool. I'm cool with all that shit. But yeah. yeah, can't wait to see what you think about it more, Ben, because it's yeah. coming. You're getting far, dude. Yeah, it's um I mean, I know the I know it's different obviously, but I know the pacing of the original game and and I have a feeling, I haven't been spoiled on it uh, of, mm-hmm. about where it will end and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what'll happen of course, you know, because it's a new potentially a new direction, but yeah, I'm, I'm anti. There was a point a few weeks ago where I was like I'm going to get spoiled on this if I don't just finish it. But I right. but I I, res- I was resisting just blazing through it. So, and I'm happy yeah. I did because I'm I'm enjoying it. I was worried about that too. I was like, fuck, yeah. I'm gonna get well, I got zero spoilers, dude. Feels good, man. Nice. <laughs> I was like, nice. yes. <laughs> Doing nice. it. Yeah, yeah, I managed to get through safely. I was one game I was afraid of getting spoiled for. It was yeah. uh, surprisingly like, you know, because you think there was like two games that Twitter just crusaded against and just spoiled for everyone. Oh, yeah. Spider Man 2 Hog Hog and I just I don't get it. <laughs> I just yeah. don't, don't get it, it man. Like, I don't get it. Just why you gotta spoil it, dude. Yeah, At least killer. wait like a month or something. Fuck. Yeah. Give people time to play the game, man. And especially Spider-Man like Final Fantasy. Totally. This, I mean, the story is yeah. so important to this game. Like you guys are saying, it's such a focus. So yeah, yeah. If I got stuff spoiled, I've been so bummed out. Dude. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. But um, man, when I just think about my time with this game, I just think about how awesome and how good Square is at like cutscenes in the game. Oh yeah. Like how many cutscenes are in this game and how awesome they're. Like think about like the combat transitions that they show like. 
them doing like their cutscenes in combat. I just think back to like, early on, just like that one shot of Cloud and Sephiroth, like back to back mm-hmm. early mm-hmm. on. I'm like, you guys are so good at all of this. I love it, dude. This is the kind of Square Enix shit I love. So it's so awesome. And they, I mean, they feel like they're on top of their game right now. At least Final Fantasy does in general. Yeah. Final Fantasy is back. It gets me very so excited for, as someone whose favorite is Final Fantasy IX, it gets me very oh, yeah. excited for what they're going to do with that remake because it's just looking more and more like it's a thing. And I don't know if they're going to give it the seven remake treatment. No, no. But I, I doubt it. But I'm OK with that because like I would honestly prefer them because I think I don't Final Fantasy seven definitely didn't need really met much correction at all. But like, sure, you know, they they filled it out with with nine, though. It's stories to me is so beautiful. I'm like, I, I would prefer you just do a traditional remake, like make it look pretty and kind of move on. Um, And so I, I hope that's what they do. But it, it has me very excited because they just get it right now Mm -hmm. with final fantasy and their jrpgs like for me it goes beyond just final fantasy i'm like oh you get it with octopath like you guys get it like you understand you have a feel for this right now um so i'm just hoping that they continue to keep that ball rolling uh with the with the nine remake because i will be all over that shit yeah nine was my second favorite so i'm also i'm like getting fed so good right now i'm just like seven was my favorite i got that nine's next probably and it's like hell yeah and i agree with you man i think it'll be much more similar to the original game i think it'll just be one game probably some better graphics but i can't see them updating it like too crazy i don't think a yeah. final fantasy game's ever gonna get three game treatment again probably. yeah yeah maybe maybe six maybe that's the only one i could ever see maybe because it's like that's the one Iconic. everyone asks for below seven so i almost don't want eight? them to redo six I'm I'm very open to them redoing six. I, if they redo six, I don't want like uh, uh, Hogan and Colin were saying that they just want like 2D HD or whatever. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want that. I want them going full all yeah. out like they did yeah. with seven, like insanely high budget right. game. That's what I want. Because like, yeah. I mean, six pixel remastered already is very good. Right. Yeah. Six is great already like that. So if you're going to go in, go in big with six. Yeah. I feel like you should. Yeah. They said but, uh, that it would, I don't know when they said it, so maybe it's dated, but I know that, I remember them mentioning it was going to take them, like, an insane amount of time if they actually remade 6. Yeah, like, probably. just packed everything into it, and, like, how, yeah. how, like, it would span more games than 7, I guess, so. Mm. Sure. Yeah, I could that see them That makes sense with that. the, uh, the, what happens in the middle of the game, yeah. So. Yeah, I could see them, I could see them splitting it up, yeah. Multiple parts, but who knows. Man, I love Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is such a good spot right now. It feels so good. Mm-hmm. Especially if you play 14 also. It's just like, whew. What you, you need to get back into, Ben. And yeah. Maddie, you got to jump in on that train. We got to do a dungeon together. We got to play together. It'll be awesome. Just tell the people to uh, stop putting out so many good games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can play honestly. 14 more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, what's coming out after Stunner Blade? Hellblade? That'll be short. Easy to get through yeah. that. I don't know anything about after that right away. So yeah, maybe this summer, maybe the summer of Final Fantasy 14. That'd be amazing. All right. Um, I think Maddie's going to step out real quick. Everybody in a yeah, second. Going to go, going to go deliver a match real quick. So <laughs> me and Ben are just going to fill the dead air talking about whatever the hell we want. Sure. <sighs> well, what about this? What about this question here? That was after oh. rebirth and, and maybe you wanted Maddie for this. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Uh, about ever feel no, lost about just, what game to play next? Yeah. What game to play next after Rebirth is a tough question. Yeah. So this is from Nico Farigon. What's up, everyone? Ever feel lost about what game to play next? That nothing is clicking feeling. I played through Re- Rebirth and loved it my, and loved my time with it. But after the beautiful experience of 60 some hours, I'm left feeling like I'm just like uh, I'm just not clicking with other games. I'm trying Dragon's Dogma 2, Dragon Quest 11. What uh, do you suggest? Currently, I'm reading instead of playing games. Thanks for the amazing content. Well, f- sometimes taking a break from gaming is good, Nico. If nothing's yeah. calling to you right now, reading's uh, a good hobby to have. And so first of all, that's completely fine. So if you've you've played Dragon's Dogma 2 and you've played Dragon Quest 11, but nothing's clicking with you. Are you it, it sounds like you're looking for something more like Final Fantasy again, like the the strong character bonds and all that kind of stuff. Like Dragon Quest has some of that, but not as strong. 
I love Dragon Quest XI, though. So I would recommend yeah. that to you anyways. But shit, man. I guess it depends uh, on, like, do you want something super long? Because, I mean, not that Dragon's Dogma is super long, although it could be. Dragon's Quest XI right. is. It I don't know. I, is. Yeah. I'm very much a fan of, like, in between these large tentpole games. Small game? Just hopping into something small. And it doesn't even have to be something narrative. Like, mm-hmm. even something that... A lot of times I'll do like one run on, for instance, right now for me, it's Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. Right. Like a lot of times I'll finish up playing a game for the night and I'm like, well, before I go to bed, I got to have a palate cleanser or like something Mm -hmm. like that. And I'll just hop into something like that. So that could be something where maybe you're not playing something hardcore that's, you know, 60, 100 hours, whatever, but it's just enough to like keep you interested, keep your reflexes sharp, I guess, uh, in the environment. I mean, reading's good. But if you're wanting to play games, it doesn't have to be like a a grand adventure, you know. Be something uh, arcadey. I agree. What's a great arcadey game that they could play? I'm just trying to think. It's so hard, Nico, because I don't know what else you're into. Resogun was mine for a while. Oh, Resogun was great, man. Yeah, that was another one where I'd just like be playing something, put it down, hop into that for you know half an hour. Mm-hmm. move on and then i would in between like big you know you get to that point where like there's another big game coming out that you know you're looking forward to so you don't want to start something that's gonna get dropped as soon as that comes out yeah so just hopping into something where you can do a couple runs and i don't know <laughs> yeah that's true. always solitaire too you know yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could play uh vampire survivors that's really cheap if yeah i just want to do something semi-mindless really easy to hop into just a few runs yeah all right, Nico, I'm going to get crazy with you, though, real quick. I'm going to recommend you two games that consumed my life when they came out, where everything just kind of disappeared, and that's all that mattered. And if you're a video listener or watcher, you can see behind me. I have a poster of Elden Ring and of Tears of the Kingdom. Two humongous games that you can get lost in that. I The time just melted away when I played these games. I, I felt like I was in a time portal essentially yeah. i was just like oh my god i've played this much already it's like oh my god it's dark already kind of game i'm just playing and playing and not thinking about anything else it's a great feeling that i rarely get and so mm-hmm. when i get these moments i cherish them so hard i mean obviously i had moments like that with rebirth too but check those two games out man two yeah. humongous rpgs i don't know what you got but if i love tears of the kingdom i think it's a fucking amazing game i have some problems with it but i think it's really great overall and Elder Ring is, my, in my opinion, one of the best open world games ever made. Yeah. So I highly recommend those. But dude, if you want a Final Fantasy game, man, try 16. I love 16. It was great. Uh, and me and Maddie were talking about 9. You can play 9 on PlayStation or whatever. Play. It's on everything, actually. You can play it on Switch, PC. I love Final Fantasy 9. I need to replay it again, actually, because it's been so long. That's a hell of an amazing game. Yeah. But I don't know, like... Any other RP like I just it feels like to me you're in the mood for an RPG just by the games you're trying. Man, I'm really bummed out you're not feeling Dragon Quest Eleven. Give it a little more time, maybe. I don't know how much you've played. Dragon Quest Eleven's an amazing game though. What a charming ass world. Have you played a Dragon Quest game, Ben? I've played a Dragon Quest game. I think uh, I don't even want to say what number because I don't remember, but I've only ever played one of them and I I beat it, but I didn't it didn't make me want to play more, but I okay. I keep hearing so much about Dragon Quest Dragon's Quest Eleven um, that I'm I'm thinking maybe I'll try it someday. But it's one of those things where like if I don't know that I'm going to love it, the amount yeah. of hours involved because I don't yeah. like to qu- I don't like to drop games. You know, yeah, I, I understand I'm, that. I'm not like I have to finish it either if I buy it. Like that's I'll, I'll stop if I need to, but it's intimidating. I guess is the right word. Yeah, it's a long game, but it was one of those games Ben, that I was playing. I wasn't even thinking about that. Mm. I was just so in for the adventure, man. It has yeah. such a good sense of like that whimsical adventure that I love. Yeah. Oh, also, you can play Persona 5 Royal if you want a humongous yeah. game with great characters. Yeah, you can play that. Maddie, we're just we're answering this guy's question. He's he played Rebirth. He loved it, but he can't find oh, anything okay. that's filling the void for him. Yeah, that, that feeling. He tried Dragon's Dogma 2 and Dragon Quest 11, but they weren't doing it for him. Yeah, it's funny you say that because like that last game I had that with was Persona 5 Royal. And I just say like ride out whatever else that game that gave you such like a strong feeling. Like just yeah. keep going. Like I just went back to Persona 5 Royal because like n- you just do every other game you try to service. Like you actually might like Dragon 
quest or dragon's dogma but just go back to rebirth there's 60 hours sounds like you got more time that you, you got more there. you got more stuff to do yeah. if you've played 60 yeah. hours just play yeah. it a little more yeah but, uh, and then you'll get kind of not sick of it but you'll be like all right i've got my fill you know and yeah then you'll feel to your content you <laughs> you'll feel content yeah i do like that yeah just give it more until there's none left all right uh maddie Let's talk Hello. about the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, this had a disastrous launch, I would say. Maybe that's an understatement for this game. Yeah. Tell me about I, it. Yeah, I, I feel bad because I feel like anytime I'm on this show, I'm like, hey, Brad, like I'm just going to blast this new game. All right. And just <laughs> step <laughs> and aside, okay. everyone. This is justified. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so uh, first of all, I appreciate you like reorienting the show a little bit while I had to step away. Um, no, it's all good. Maddie, what were you doing with that mattress? I got to know. Uh, so we're donating it uh, just oh, because okay. we're, we're getting a new one. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, yeah. I was just so. for a much more exciting answer. But. No, it's just we're donating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a whole process. But yeah, we were, we were donating. And so I just had to help load it into a truck. Um, but yeah, I Battlefront Classic Collection is like obviously a slam dunk, right? Like we're talking about uh, two of the most iconic Star Wars games ever made put them in a box ship it like you've won you've won this is hitting the lottery basically right like there's nostalgic yeah. factor the star wars branding like this is gonna sell like hotcakes just gotta just gotta put it in a box right and just sell it and i mean i guess they kind of did just do that because what they <laughs> launched was was uh inexcusable <laughs> now i admit they patched uh they put out one patch i haven't tried that patch but i have i played it at launch and i was like i was just very disappointed in a couple of things some of them i'm gonna sound like I'm, I'm i'm being picky but i think for the trophy hunters out there they'll appreciate some of my complaints i'll start there it's like dude they they have two great games here with campaigns mm -hmm. like full feature set galactic conquest instant action fun little quirks on each map and they combine the trophy list between the two games i'm like what are you guys doing especially when you start up the game you launch it into a separate skew like you start it up and they're like what do you want to play battlefront one or two and then you fire it up and there's no going back. So I'm like, there are two separate products here, but nonetheless. And also, I think it would have benefited them just to sell them all a card. Like, here's Battlefront 1, here's Battlefront 2. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pick the one that you want and they'll just sell on their own. Uh, so you could make trophy lists for them. But yeah, there are things like when you get like five kills, you you get this thing called like energy regen. Like they have trophies attached to that, not like, oh, hey, you 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 won Galactic Conquest with the Empire. You won Galactic Conquest with the Republic. Uh, there's no like unique progression based achievements and trophies. Like, it's extremely disappointing. It's an easy platinum and I'm, I'm going to go get it. But like, it's mm -hmm. just it's super disappointing, man. Like they just they could have done so much more there. And I think that's kind of the moral of the story is like, uh, you know, cleaning it up is one thing, but like making the game 40 gigabytes bigger than it had to be is another <laughs> um bringing in the dlc is cool stealing from modders is another thing <laughs> um, right you know it, that's the problem is they and they were disingenuous they like had the mods in the trailer and they're like no no no, we didn't do that and then the modders came out and they're like oh they we just we just data mined the game they they took <laughs> our mods <laughs> so i mean and aspire i used to root for but like i feel like they've just lost themselves since the kotor remake truly like fall into the dark side um Nice. There, there was an audio bug that like I immediately knew something was wrong with the game when I reviewed it. Um, I, I fired it up and uh, Battlefront 1, for those who don't remember, has this like, I think, iconic loading screen where it's like boom, 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 boom. And like the map expands each time and then like it loads into the match. And the sound was just different. It was like boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. I'm like, who? What fucking what? sorcery is this? How'd you guys do this? Like, how'd you destroy this part of the game too? Yeah. Um, the online is better on Battlefront Two, but in Battlefront One, it's a catastrophe. Like, it doesn't work. Uh, from when I played it, like the the ping is awful, hit registration's awful, everyone's lagging all over the place. Camera freaks the hell out in Battlefront Two whenever you die online. Like, it's just got what I've said here. None of these probably sound like deal breakers to anyone, but combined you just go and look at it and think to yourself well man this is a really great game and it's just launched with a myriad of little problems that combine to something kind of frustrating is it still battlefront and fun absolutely is the single player part functional enough i guess but they took out the cutscenes in battlefront 2's campaign wait what why what? yeah don't know wish i knew it makes no sense uh, the the most i can say they did that was surprising is like oh they took so during battlefront 2's campaign like they'll have clips in the movies show up 
Yeah. And um and and when I I just did a retro rebound video for it a couple of weeks ago when I put it on my uh, Series X, the the movie clips are like 480p, very brief, you know, like Coyote Moody on Megiddo and just fighting off some 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 droids and that was it. And you couldn't really see what was going on even with the back compat up resing and all that stuff. But like now <laughs> they, like, it seems like they took clips from like the Blu-ray movie. So you actually see it better. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. But yeah, like the cutscenes are missing. Um, again, I don't know if they've patched this in yet, but it's more like a buyer beware for anyone who sees it and goes like, Oh, that's an easy purchase for me. Like it should be an easy purchase. It really should be. I don't blame anyone for thinking that, but seriously, battlefront classic collection is like uh, a big miss. It's really disappointing in that regard. I'll still go get the platinum trophy though. So yeah, well, because that. you guys, it's a special place in your heart. It sounds like. So oh you love yeah, that game. I distinctly remember when that game got introduced to me, and like it's especially cool because it's so many games are about like the particular hero character. It's like oh cool, I just get to be a soldier in these battles. You hear so much about right. in the movies. So that was a big selling point for me as a kid, and I loved it. Uh, well, I remember when this came out, it like had three servers. Mm. Yes. period yeah when i started playing because i played it the weekend after it had come out so it came out on like a friday and i played it on a i think i actually played it on a sunday night but yeah when i fired it up brad like the, the the servers were there there was a decent amount but uh to see what the list was and think wow this was only three apparently that was a bug too uh okay. like they were there but they just weren't visible and i'm like I, I, I'm assuming you guys <laughs> knew about this. Like guys. this should I already won. And yeah. the other disappointing part, and I said it in my video, was I was like, man, how the fuck are reviewers putting out content for this game before testing multiplayer and battlefront? Like, look, I, I agree. Like I was a completely about the PvE experience, but PvP and Battlefront is a huge deal. Like I think it was 2020 or 2021, they added PvP back to Battlefront One in like a random update. And it mm-hmm. activated the servers and everything, and it was great. And uh, people were like were coming back in and in a, a massive way. And so multiplayer matters. Obviously, if that wasn't the case, you just look at the EA Dice Battlefront games and reviewers like pushed out their content with this PVE stuff. I'm like, OK, I, I can understand you thinking like, well, this is probably a safe bet. But like, that's the worst mistake you can make is like, yeah, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's like you got to <laughs> make sure and just like you being an extra day late shouldn't matter that much just to see if the multiplayer works. And now look how yeah. bad it is. And I see people like retitling their videos and shit. I'm like, dude, some people have really got caught with their pants down with this game. It's bad uh, because it it was it was not covered in a good way. Yeah. I mean, to me, the selling point would have been for online play. Yeah, like, that's the big yeah. selling point to me for this game is like playing this game. That was awesome. I had online back then. But like now in 2024 or whatever, it's like and you fuck that up. Yeah. It's like that would prevent me from buying the game immediately. Like 100%. if I was super into Battlefront, like I think it's cool, it's awesome, but like I don't, I don't ever want to buy it now. Yep. Especially you're telling me it's still like the first game is still really bad online. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, what are you guys doing, man? Yeah, how are you yeah. fucking this up? Yeah, the, the the worst part really is Battlefront One. Like it just got done dirty on the trophy list. Like most of the trophies are for Battlefront Two, and I say it as someone who likes Battlefront Two more. Mm -hmm. Battlefront 1 in many ways is a better game as far as I'm concerned. But even if like, again, it's just such a missed opportunity. Uh, This this would have done well. You could have released this in January, July, the thick of the holiday season. I think this game would have done well no matter what. So I'm like, what is what was the rush? Why did we have to force this out to the point where it's like we had to beat a quarter and like get this thing out in time? I'm like, did you like this was going to do well, even if you lost out on one quarter, it definitely would have made up in the next, in my opinion, my very amateur opinion, might I add. But I just yeah, I was very shocked at like how much they felt the need to rush this thing out, Uh, especially when they were just coming off the Tomb Raider remaster collection or trilogy, Mm -hmm. uh, which was from Aspire. And I'm like, you're just coming off one project. Like, why did you need to get Battlefront out this quarter? This it didn't it didn't business wise make sense either. It just seemed like uh, way too hasty of a decision just to cash in quick. Yeah. And it shows, man, it's really disappointing because I know yeah. this game is like so many people love these games, man. They have so many people grew up playing them and it's awesome. And it's just like, dude, it yeah. like I'm sure it, like hurts your soul. You just can't like recommend it. <laughs> you can't just be like, hey, it's great, man. It's awesome. Well, the one good thing that came out of it is I've always been an advocate that people still care about Star Wars. Like, I don't think it's right. as hated and as much of a piece of shit as people make it out to be. 
And while you look at it and go like, see, look, Star Wars is bad. It's the ninth worst reviewed game ever on Steam. I'm like, people care enough to be to, to get it that low and, right. and put it that many reviews in mass. So I'm like, Star Wars has a place and it matters. And people get very mad when it sucks. Yeah. So there's this level of care and that shows that you should probably try to do it right. You should probably take yeah. your time with it because the audience will pay back in kind. No doubt about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, look at the Jedi series. Game, dude. Yeah, people love exactly. those games. They're great games, so it makes sense. Like, if you just make a good Star Wars game, people are into it. Right. Like, people yeah. love like the old Dark Forces games and stuff like that. Yeah, people love Tie Fighter. It's just like, man, if you treat Star Wars right, people will show up, dude. Kotor, so, Kotor, yeah, <laughs> people like people love Kotor. Man, I feel bad for you, Maddie. You're getting fucked over on these Star Wars games, dude. It sucks ass. <laughs> it's, it's a little painful, I'll admit. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Logan Carter wrote in, Greetings, gentlemen. Hope all is well. I have to send a... F- okay, I put this in the air. It was a sorted out, but it was Star Wars related. I have to send a fat sorted out to aspire for their half-assed, aris- uh, atrocious, sad excuse of a remaster they call Star Wars Battlefront Class Collection. I bought this game for my brother and me to play since we spent countless hours as kids playing split screen. But we were sadly disappointed that the only way to play with your friends is to is hope to join the same server. Wait, what? I understand Mm, there's still split screen, but I feel adding a party system or just being able to invite your friends is the least they could have done when re-releasing these two great games. Thanks all for listening to my rant. Would love to hear what you all have to say. I had no idea that was a thing either. You can't like party up with your friends or join them. (laughs) No, no, that's actually funny. I I never thought of that. But yeah, that's a really good point because it's something that they could have stapled on. Like I'm usually pro keep it as it is. Like don't Mm -hmm. if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I I would understand that philosophy for Battlefront. Uh, Perhaps not the best phrase to use for the game (laughs) was totally broken and they need to fix it now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I I wasn't aware that there was missing split screen. That's that's a. very disappointing. No, I think the, if no, you're or, trying to play online or something. Oh, could, yeah. The, the lacking still party split system. Screen. OK, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah, the, the lacking party system and not being able to invite friends is like the bare minimum. It's always been a server based game, though. So, right. I wonder how much rework, like, reworking that would be to be like, hey, we're all like we have a group of four and we're going into this server and we check if there's availability there, if that's like easy or difficult. But I imagine there wasn't even time to <laughs> to weigh that out Sounds for like Aspire it, yeah. based on how quickly they got this one out. Yeah, I don't know how easy it is to join a server. I haven't like tried it myself, so I don't know. But like, I imagine you just got to be on Discord with your friends, which is fine. Just be like, all right, everyone join this server, I guess. It was yeah. like the old days, but still feels weird. I guess it's just another notch against it with all the things it's got going bad for it right now. Yeah, pretty much. Goddamn, dude. I'm sad. <laughs> uh let's see let's take let's move on to our questions the final segment of the show if you want to send in a question to this podcast or any of our other podcasts head on over to patreon.com slash last media you can send in questions for us we'll read them this is from nico what's up everyone oh wait we already did this one nico we hit you already nico i'm just gonna delete you so i don't even think about that <laughs> thanks for writing in nico uh it's from isaac Howdy, Summon Signers. I hope all is well. Although this game franchise was not on the docket for this episode, I would feel remiss if I didn't ask the panel about Kingdom Hearts, given who is on this week. When I saw that this this past week marked the 22nd anniversary of Kingdom Hearts franchise, I was overcome with so many emotions. The Kingdom Hearts games have been paramount in shaping my taste in games, the music I like, and who I am as a person. Plus, the composer for the franchise, Yoko Shimomura, just won a Lifetime Achievement Award at GDC for her work in the game industry. I know Brad and Maddie both love the franchise, but what is your history with Kingdom Hearts, Ben? I'm sure you all have rattled off your favorite games of the franchise countless times, but do you have any favorite songs featured in Kingdom Hearts games? My favorites will always be Kingdom Hearts 2, Dearly Beloved, and Twilight Town. Thanks for the hours of content each week, and have a Patiently waiting for a six plus hour deep dive into Kingdom Hearts with <laughs> Dustin, Brad, and Maddie kind of day. Yeah. Oh boy. That would be insane. <laughs> um, yeah, Ben, do you have any history of Kingdom Hearts? So I played Kingdom Hearts one. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was right when it came out or whatever. I borrowed it from a friend. Uh, and then I think by the time Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, I was like 
a senior in high school, mm-hmm. way too cool for Daffy Duck, had a girlfriend. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, and just, uh, no, I just didn't, I didn't play it. But over the years, I've often reminisced on my, how good of a time I had with the original Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. And I know that the story is ridiculous and nobody actually understands it. And if you tell me you do, I don't believe you. Yeah, but uh, I have the, I think it's the the 2.5 or the, yeah. or it's like the story so far. It's the, it's the PS4 collection. I bought it. I think it was on a price error or something one, one year and I bought it for PS4 and I have it um, ready to play. It's actually in like the stack of three or four games sitting next to my PS5 that I, I will play eventually. Now, you know, other games get added on top of that. Right. But so I'm interested in, in going back and playing through all of them um, and then have and picking up Kingdom Hearts three. But uh, yeah, I just never went past Kingdom Hearts one uh, and never. Yeah. I've always felt the draw, though. You know, it's yeah. always there. Yeah, it's, it's something there. I've always known. And now you Only got me, Dustin and Maddie chirping in your ear. Yeah, you've been a really bad influence for me, Brad. Join, by the way. join yeah. us. Yeah. Here's the thing we need to do. We just need to get everyone on board for Kingdom Hearts at one time and treat it like a book club. Oh, my God. Because I know Gene's <laughs> curious about it. Colin said he'll play He's it. ever played Kingdom Hearts? He's played. I don't think he's ever finished it. He, dude, okay. I think he gave up at Tarzan a long time ago. Then he came <laughs> back recently at Tarzan and finished Tarzan, then just stopped playing. I was like, bro, how are you coming back to Kingdom Hearts years later? No, it's starting at Tarzan. What are you doing? You got to start the game over, man. It's not even that long of a game. It's pretty short. It's It's been more than a few months for me. I pretty much got to start over. Yeah, Yeah. you're like at you're like the third world, dude. (laughs) You're still so (laughs) early in the game, man. (laughs) Yeah, we should get everyone on board and play it all at one time and like make it a work thing. So that's how we get you boys in. Hmm. Because four is coming, dude. Yeah, you're gonna want to be on there fighting ATSTs with Sora. You're gonna be, you're gonna want to do it. I am, especially after Rebirth's combat. I'm like, it just felt like Kingdom Hearts two to me. I'm thinking, please God, have this be in Kingdom Hearts two. Just copy it. Just copy it. Like minus the ATB system. Just copy it. Like it's so good. It feels so yeah. Kingdom Hearts two with how like floaty and aerial based it is. It got me really excited for KH four, mm-hmm. which is something I haven't said recently because I just I, don't, <laughs> I haven't like lost hope for Kingdom Hearts, but I'm just like. Three was very, uh, I kind of soured on it a bit. And so I think it's a good game, but I don't think it's a great game. I think other I think games in the franchise are three great. Three is the best Kingdom Hearts game. I respect Usually it. Like, yeah, it's not, it's, it, it, it's in moments like we talked about this, Brad, like Radiant yeah. Garden, where I'm like, you guys are so deep in your own lore that you have to spend like five minutes just <laughs> spelling it out for me. And like, even as someone yeah. who's like into this and has replayed these games, I'm like, what? Like, Oh, God. Yeah. Am I an idiot? Because I have friends who who there's this video called like it was getting recommended for a while. I haven't seen it, but it was like Kingdom Hearts is actually not that complicated. It's like a three or it's like hour and a half to three hour video somewhere in that mm-hmm. range where this dude is explaining all these things in Kingdom Hearts and all the comments are like, see, like I always said it wasn't that complicated. I'm like, dude, someone made a movie to explain <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the fucking game series. Like it's not there's, straightforward. Yeah. I mean, it's complicated. One thing I would say is just because there's so much information. There's mm-hmm, so yeah. much, dude. It's been going since 2002, and it's like everything yeah. is important. So it's yeah. just like there's I, a fuck ton. I, yeah. I respect that they keep the continuity. I think the, the biggest problem I have is like the million versions of Sora. I'm just like, we can't let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of you it. Mean you mean like know? Sora in the games? You, you, so you have like Sora, like all these different pieces of oh, Sora. Oh, or, do you mean like Roxas and all that Venetis, stuff? Yeah, like okay, all, all these it. other characters that are kind of hey, spread that arcs over. The, yeah, that that arcs exactly. Over. Which is why I'm saying I have a little optimism for KH4. Um, I'm also excited because it seems like Tetsuya Nomura has just has just made it his life's goal to get versus 13 out the door, even if he's rebranding it into kingdom hearts. And I'm <laughs> yes, like, I'm right. like, dude, fuck. Yeah. This game I always wanted. Like I love, I love final fantasy 15. I'm a big defender of it, but like, dude, you're going to give me versus 13 through kingdom hearts. Yeah. Like that's a winning formula. Let's versus go. Versus 13 looks so much better to me of what it was. It was cool to see. I, I re- recently uh, a month or two ago, rewatched the gameplay that it released with the announcement of that game. Mm hmm. And I kind of felt like once the DLC was there and done, I was like, okay, they kind of got to where they wanted to be for the most a part. A better spot from what I understand. Yeah. I never yeah. played the DLCs or the, 
what is it called royal edition yeah 15 dlc is it. great i wish yeah. they got to finish that all out with like all the other side characters but i thought it was it really changed my opinion of the game like it was that good nice. yeah, yeah that's what i'm hearing man because like i think 15 was f- i liked parts of 15 there's some parts i did not like about 15 mm-hmm. I think back to some boss fights where I'm just like, what are you fucking doing, dude? Yeah, Leviathan yeah. boss fight. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Lord, this is so shitty. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is nice to see 15 get turned around somewhat. And I don't know, Square's firing on all cylinders right now. So maybe four will just be hopefully the best one. But I'm excited, man. Star Wars. It's finally going to happen. Lightsaber Keyblade, dude. I know I've been saying that I, I, I have a video on my Mr. Matty channel from before Kingdom Hearts three and it's a wish list video mm-hmm. and I say I wanted Toy Story which is like my favorite part of Kingdom Hearts three I love yeah. that they did Toy Story although I wish they had Zerg as the final fight it's like the one thing that just <laughs> pisses yeah. me off it's not there I would love for them to do like data fights and, and get that right but nonetheless um it was that in Star Wars and like I'm so excited that they're finally going to do Star Wars and I think they're I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bull one out there Brad I think I'm gonna do Marvel. I think they're going to find I think a that's a bold one, actually, Maddie. I think that's okay. a pretty safe bet. OK, you think it's a game? OK, I love I that. I think it's yeah. a really safe bet. Like, wh- where do they go, though? That's the question. I think it's going to be the old Avengers. Mm. New York like, City, Sora. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think it'll be like the old school Iron Man. Okay. Captain America, because like Sora that. will love that shit. Yeah, <laughs> he will be so pumped, dude, to be a superhero. Goofy teaming up with Captain America. Come on. Yeah, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Both throwing shields together. Yeah. Yes. What, how's that not a sales pitch? I know <laughs> it's going to happen, dude. Let's go. All right. This is from Rock has. Oh, just PSA. Get the all in one collection, everybody. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Everything's there pretty much. Yes. And it's yeah. usually on sale quite frequently. So pick it up. Sorry, it's not on Steam either. It's only on Epic Game Store still. Yeah. And they were not cheap. All right, it's from Rekaz. What's up, Summoners? I got to ask, what's the panel's feelings or what the panel's feelings are on Final Fantasy 14? I remember Ben talking about starting it. And while I know Maddie plays on all consoles, Final Fantasy 14 recently came to the land of the Dukes on Xbox. I was wondering what Ben and Maddie think about either continuing to play or playing for the first time. Dawn Trail is only three months away, and I can't wait for the discussions of it on this show. Thanks, and have a Yoshi P doesn't miss kind of day. Rack has. All right, boys. Final Fantasy 14. Everyone knows I love this thing. I'm already in. I'll be ready for Dawn Trail. In my opinion, Final Fantasy 14 is one of the best Final Fantasies ever. Mm. And one of the best stories ever in Final Fantasy which is hard to th- it's hard to think that because I remember people saying that to me before I was caught up when I'd be when I was like back an expansion or whatever. I was like, man, really is good. <laughs> it's really good, man. <laughs> Somehow they fucking did it. But what's going on with 14? Ben, you played a little bit of it, but so much shit came out. You had to fall back. We yeah. were talking about it earlier. You would like to play. Mm-hmm. We just don't know when. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. I would like to play it more and I I'd like to get into it. But I will say that uh, there you have this kind of thing happen with various franchises and video games. Right. But one of the things that is the worst about Final Fantasy 14 is that its fans will not leave you the hell alone about it. <laughs> True. Uh, since I mentioned that I was checking it out a couple of months ago on Summon Sign, I think I've probably been asked 50 to 75 times, Ben, where are you? How are you liking it? What, do, you, do you want me to hop in and help you? I can give you a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, guys, st- leave me alone. I've never had that experience with any other game <laughs> franchise out there. So I'm interested in, uh, in playing it again. But again, it's just the I'm I'm not ever. That's not a game I'm going to choose over something like. Sure. You know. Especially like over Rebirth or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. I understand that. But yeah, yeah I'm interested. Um, but leave me alone. I'll, I'll get to it. All right. <laughs> yeah. You guys don't have to worry about that. I am enough. I will bug them enough on my own. So <laughs> yeah. don't worry about asking Ben. I'll be annoying about it. <laughs> Maddie, what's going on with you in it? Yeah. Xbox and them getting Final Fantasy 14 had like little to do with like me wanting to play it. Like I was going right. to try to pick it back up at some point. Knowing Dawn Trail is I mean, I know early access is end of June, but it comes out july like beginning of july mm-hmm. it's a big enough buffer where i'm looking at it kind of tantalizing 
Uh, I'm like, oh, could I do this? Here's the problem I'm having, Brad. Yes. I have a little entertainment quandary here in that most of the things I seem to really like require this massive investment to get into. So <laughs> yes. Trails. I have put so much of my life into that series. And I would say the first game is pretty much the equivalent of of Realm Reborn. Like, oh, here's 40 hours of world building. And man, is it going to be fucking worth it? But you're going to yawn a lot. You're going to be bored yeah. a lot. You're going to wonder what the hell you're doing a lot. I'm going through that a little bit with Way of Kings, which is a book I'm reading where I'm like, uh, it's a 1200 mammoth of a book and like, fuck, it's just a ton of world building. There's some good shit in here, but like, I know it's not going to be a book. I'm like, wow, this is great until like the last 150, 200 pages where it just all comes together. And like, now I got to add another of that into my life yeah. again with Final <laughs> Fantasy 14, where it's like, okay, I'm going to hate my entertainment again for like 40 hours as I just, you'd think I develop a love for like the slow build up, and I do, but you know, as a, as a critic, but also a creator, I'm like, Mm-hmm. You could have done this to make it better or like circumvent that. Like you didn't have to waste time there. Like it, it just, it triggers all the wrong things in me. But then I get over that hump and I get to the part where it's like, all right, Hey, you already know those past 50 hours. So it's pedaled in a metal time. And so like mm-hmm. next, like 200 hours is great shit. Like I, I talked about with trails. It's like, yeah, it's totally worth it. So it's partial willpower, Brad, like yeah. working myself up to, all right, let's just commit. It's also, I have the same problem. Ben is it's like, tell these companies to stop making good games. Like, Dragon's Dogma is definitely going to have its teeth in me until maybe Ewood and Chronicles. And if I, heaven forbid, right. if I like Stellar Blade, like you guys are saying I'm going to, then I got a bigger problem now. <laughs> and then we get into May and no doubt I'm going to play Hellblade 2 because, you know, it's a big Xbox game. So, of course, right. I'm going to do it for Duke. Absolutely. But also, like, I love the first Hellblade. So that one I don't anticipate to t- take me more than a weekend. But, um, you know, I'm like, look at it. It's like, OK, but is it too late at that point? So I know I'm not trying to, to, to pussyfoot around it. Like, I'm going to do it. This year, uh, I'm going to jump in. I know now is a good time to. I always have this kind of envision in my vision in my head of like, I want to make a retro rebound video on it because I've done it for like, I, I've just gradually built up this catalog of Final Fantasy videos and re- massive retrospectives on these games. Like, you made like a 40 minute one on, um, on eight. We made like an almost hour video on 12. Like, I enjoy wow. just picking these, these games apart and I'm like, <laughs> There's no doubt that that uh, 14 would be a fucking treasure trove for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really want to do it. Uh, I think it's a good time to start getting ready to to get into it. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm greasing the wheels, Brad, is what I'd say I'm doing. You know, I'm, yeah, we're, we're checking all systems right now. We're getting ready for takeoff. Uh, we'll see where we get because, uh, you know, a lot of games that were kind of hang holding me back have been beaten. Like I beat Tekken. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, that was nice. And that's done. That's I beat. Uh, rebirth. It's like okay, so I'm just I'm just a man taken by Dragon's Dogma right now, right? And I've been putting some steady hours into that because I love that game. So uh, who knows? Maybe I start 14 sooner. But I, I I envision that Brad, you we might be sitting down to talk about some 14 by come summer. Ooh, I'd love that. That's the goal. Uh, if you play it, Maddie, where are you gonna play? Uh, is there like a good spot to play? I don't know. I was thinking just PC, uh, but like, yeah, I, that's where I play. OK, I mean, they're all probably fine. I just know with Xbox, they have like their own currency kind of stuff like that. Like, and I think you have to have a subscription yeah, to play it, I too. About that yeah. it has some like hurdles you kind of have to jump through. I don't we'll know how bad that, they are, yeah. but <laughs> well, Maddie, you yeah. just made like two fatal errors, though. Wow. You said you might play Final Fantasy 14, which, as we know, is a death wish. And yes. you mentioned you were reading Sanderson and that that fan base is like very oh, similar. Shit. So you're screwed. Yeah. 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 yeah I, Good luck. I, and, and heaven forbid, if I really submerge myself again into one piece, I'm just, Oh my God. Oh <laughs> Jesus. I, at least I slowed that down a little bit and it's like, okay, I'm going to pump the brakes and get into these other things. But yeah, like I'm on chapter 47 in way of Kings. I'm like, Holy shit. Like I have like 30 more to go. This is insane, yeah. man. So yeah. it's, it's a book, man. Have you read? Have you read? Them? Have. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. like them? Or are you like a super fan of them? Or are you like, yeah, I, right. I don't know about super fan, but I used to read like a fiend. I've talked about that a lot on different shows. And right. Um, yeah, I read quite a few books in that series, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not current by any means. Yeah, I know they're yeah. releasing a fifth book this year. So apparently yeah. I've been I've been told it's the trail series of books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the language I speak. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Holy shit, dude. Uh, but yeah, they'll play 14 when they can. That's just 
there's so much shit. 14 is a commitment, obviously. It's a an MMO, but yeah, it's wonderful. Fair. And yeah. I don't blame anyone for not wanting to take on that task. Because it is a lot. But like you're saying, Maddie, it's worth it once you get there. It's the trails effect. I wish I just like things thing. less. Like I wish I could just be like, yes, Final <laughs> Fantasy sucks, that. man. I mean, I'm not interested. Screw off. But it's like, man, this looks cool. I wanna I wanna play this. I wanna experience the near dungeon that people told me about, you know, like or the raid. <laughs> like, I wanna yeah. see what all about oh like the near yeah. raids yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that shit's i want cool, to level up by making clothes like i i don't know that's like that's scratching a runescape itch man that's yeah, a dangerous totally, thing totally dude yeah. yeah you can get some of that runescape scape itches the yeah. only problem with dawn trail is well it probably won't be a problem for me it comes out a week after the Elden ring dlc oh Ooh. yoshi p specifically said he wants to delay it a week so he can play Elden ring and everyone else can too so like, you all have one week <laughs> Till early access starts. And I was like, Old of him to assume we'll be done in a week. I know. 14 can stand on its own. Yoshi P knows what's up. That's the kind of comments that are like, yeah, (laughs) everyone's gonna be playing Elden Ring, dude. Yeah. All right. This is from Not Your Mom. Hey, Sacred Bunnies. You know what I love? Easter eggs and games. Over the years, it seems like every game has some type of Easter egg, especially licensed games. What are some of your favorite slash most memorable Easter eggs in gaming? My personal favorite Easter egg is from Xeno Saga Episode 3. I'm not going to know any of this, so we'll, we'll see. Can anyone guess what it is? Nope. nope. If you can't guess, I'll explain it. You don't have to read this. Uh, I'll read this. So, listeners, I don't know if there's Xeno Saga spoilers in this old-ass game with and Xeno Gears, so I don't know. So, come at your own peril. <laughs> well... There's a boss you fight about halfway through the game. It looks and fights similar to Welltall from Xenogears. When you beat the boss, it starts to power up, but retreats. Later in the game, you see a robot in a hangar, and the PA is asking for the pilot to return to the robot. After you do a bunch of shit, you can fight the boss again. This time, you are fully powered up, and the boss is a cakewalk. However, it powers up and transforms into Omega ID. Thinking about this Easter egg just makes my pants tight. And I really hope we get some type of Xeno Gears remaster or remake. Sorry if that was long. That's really cool. That's good. I never played Xeno Saga games. Did you ever play them, Maddie? Uh, no, I have. Hmm. Can I see it here? I can. I have the first Xeno Saga on PS2. Okay. I have the yeah. first one. That was like the era of dot hack also and all that stuff. I played the first dot hack. I have the first one, yeah. And I got bored of it, but I still have it. Yeah, first one was like, I I don't think I played it right because I beat the first one. I thought that was it. And then it's like an episode or it's like a volume. So I beat volume one. And then, yeah, I had three other volumes to go. And I just stopped after one. One ends on a cliffhanger. So, yeah. Yeah. In terms of Easter eggs in gaming, one that always comes to my mind is in Ocarina of Time, when you first meet Princess Zelda in the castle courtyard or something like that, if you look inside the windows, there's pi- uh, portraits on the wall, like Mario and some Mario characters. Mm. I think maybe Bowser's oh, right? there, That's too. Cool. Yeah. I love that. And also, uh, in Wolf- do you guys remember that old Wolverine game on like PS2? I think it was on Xbox. I think it was called Wolverine Unleashed, maybe? Yeah. It was an Activision one or something like that. But people Wolverine's really liked Revenge? it. X2 maybe Wolverine's revenge it might be that it might be that's what it's called i can't I love remember but uh there is frostmorn in there from world of warcraft that's arthas's sword and it's like it was Ooh. like frozen in ice too just like in uh warcraft 3 so it was really cool but uh yeah i bet they're all older uh uh borderlands 2 they have okay. amazing easter eggs and references in that game there's so they have favorite. too many maddie yeah that's true they my favorite two are the the ninja turtle boss fight side mission you literally Mm -hmm. go to like get pizza for someone you fight like four turtles and a rat in a a boss fight that was awesome and then there's another one that's in a a a region that's uh in this like swampy area and if you you can see this little like island way in the distance and if you have enough health and shield you can run out to it and you'll find uh the the character from dark souls sitting outside of yeah they have like yeah the bonfire i remember that and that one i always thought was super cool another one i like i like cool references i guess so uh this one's more of an in-family one but there was the um 
I'm forgetting the name of the serial in Fallout, but they had promotions for that all over the Evil Within one. Um, oh, and I thought that was pretty cool. cool. I didn't know yeah. that. I, I always like that. Yeah, Evil Within one's one of my favorite survival horror games. I, I love Evil Within. It's so great. Um, I want a third one so bad. I think Please. they're gonna do it. I think they're I gonna do so. it. They kind of teased it. They that was an Easter egg in uh in High Fi Rush. They they teased yeah, another they Evil Within. So that was cool. That was a I, cool one. Yeah, I I think they'll do it. But um, those are just a couple that come to mind. I like those. Oh, uh, there was which one was it? I think it was the last of us one they had uh I think it was either PS3 or the Uncharted or they had like a Jack and Daxter board game yeah they, yeah, they had like some cool ones there I really like those too what about you Ben any Easter eggs you can think of I think in uh I think it was Fallout 4 no it was New Vegas I think it was New Vegas they had the um the fridge with uh, <laughs> yeah. Indiana. Oh. <laughs> uh yeah. that was a good one and then the other one I, I've always I remember seeing this years ago and, and thinking it was awesome. I don't remember if I saw it in the game or not, but I I know of it. Um, the the Jar Jar Binks and Carbonite in Force Unleashed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's another good one. I yeah, like that's awesome. stuff. and both of those are like both of those are the kind of Easter eggs that are like we know everybody thought this was corny, so we're going to kind of make fun of it. It's not. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, those are the, those are the two big ones I can think of. But I know LSM has the, our logo in. Uh, 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 it's um, I can't say the Dying name Light. Dying, Dying Light, Light 2. Two. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I haven't. I haven't seen it, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love uh, did that. Question for you, Maddie. Since uh, Ben brought up Indiana Jones, will there be a Elder Scrolls and Fallout reference in Indiana Jones? It's got to be. There's got to be like if you're playing Indiana Jones, like Both. what I think of is like you do one of the optional, maybe they have like optional dungeons and one of the treasures you get at the end is just a vault boy. Like you got to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Or you get like the 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 Skyrim helmet or whatever. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds like a better fit, right? The Dova Keen's helmet. Like, yeah, they got to do a little something like that. It, it seems too obvious. Yeah. yeah. Todd can't help himself, dude. No, <laughs> Throw 100%. it in, Todd. Yeah, come throw on, it in get some dragon shouts as Indiana jones that'd be pretty fun actually <laughs> <laughs> all right last question is from so free to bandito hey summon boys i have a question for maddie have you ever played dragon ball z legendary super warriors you say you love the fusion world card game and this is one of the original card based dragon ball games it's on game boy color it plays like Slay the Spire and turn paced RPG. Hopefully you check it out and give it me and give it a and give me a retro rebound. <laughs> Whoa, they're giving you homework, Maddie. Yeah, here we go. I feel this game is very underrated and not covered anywhere. Keep up the awesome job, Brad, and have my have a my favorite game never gets covered kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, what is this? I'm going to look this up. Yeah, I, I, I do own this game. Um it's one of the few Game Boy Color games I have complete in box. I uh, I played it a lot as a kid. Um, it's exactly what you described. I wouldn't say Slay the Spire. That's definitely a little too encouraging for the type of game it is. <laughs> um, just because it's, I, I don't think it's fantastic, but uh, it's it's some of the slowest turn based combat, and it's very like puzzle oriented. You know, you have to like block at very specific times and attack at very specific times and charge up your key at very specific times, but uh, I, I do have a lot of memories of the game. I remember going to um, I was going on a school trip and, you know, like it was always exciting when you went on like one of those amusement park trips and they got like the the big right. coach bus with the the TVs on the ceiling and, and the AC. And it was just a nice, cozy ride to the amusement park. And uh, I remember you were allowed to take your video games with you, like really enjoy yourself. And so I, I remember taking this game with me. Um, and playing it a lot i specifically remember because while i was playing it this fucking chick was harassing me and my dad was with me i was like dad can you get her to stop and he's not gonna overrule it's someone else's kid but like i was definitely put him in an awkward spot and uh yeah so i just had to like really dial into my game because i was i was getting harassed while playing it but otherwise uh great times great memories and uh this game is 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 decent i would say it's decent. decent there are other okay there are other dragon ball he mentioned fusion world that's like the card game i really love um but there's a lot of other Dragon Ball card game experiences like uh, here's a name for you. Haro Kanaro Densetsu. That's one. What? Um, <laughs> that's on the DS. And that's uh, that's apparently pretty good. So there's Ooh. a few of them out there. I just Man. have to ask if this chick that was harassing you was harassing you about Dragon Ball. 
No, nah, she was like one of those girls she, like that. That was uh, like she would kick my shins intentionally. Okay, oh, so she was flirting with you. Yeah, she was. Flirting I, with I you. guess so. I, yeah. I, I, it pissed me off, so it didn't right. work. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> she failed. Yeah, man. The only Dragon Ball game I had on, I think, was Game Boy was um, Legacy of Goku or Game oh, Boy Advance. Yeah. That's the one I had. Yeah. That was pretty cool back in the day. They made a I second one. I never played back. it. Yeah, those games are so good. Yeah, They're man. still great. Like I just recently replayed Legacy of Goku 2 for a, I shouldn't say recently, a couple years ago for a video. And that game was awesome. Boo's Fury is still really good. First one sucks. First one's so bad. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Uh, ben, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Maddie, thank you for joining me. We, I appreciate it. Of course. You all being here. It's great. Love talking about games with all you boys. Uh, we'll see if we'll talk about 14 in the future. Leave these boys alone, though. They're busy. <laughs> They'll get to it when they get to it. But uh, yeah, I thanks everybody for there. watching. Yeah, <laughs> listening. I really appreciate it. Check us out on last or on Patreon.com last stand media if you'd like to support us. We'd appreciate that also. But uh, yeah, any final words from you boys before we head out or should we just get the hell out of here? Just get the hell out of here. Yeah, let's just get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. All right, see you, everybody. Take care. Take it easy. Summon Sign is a product of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is written and hosted by me, Brad Ellis. The show is produced by Dustin Furman. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. Summon Sign, along with the rest of Last Stand's media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we are grateful for your kind contribution and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.